football fans, let's go. The best game of the season is finally here, and you guys already know who I'm repping. San Fran, baby. With all eyes on Super Bowl 58 in Vegas, it's the last weekend to get your football bets in. So we teamed up with DraftKings, an official partner of the NFL. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Yeah, I said instantly. All customers can bet on Super Bowl 58 and get it matched with a bonus bet. Download the DraftKings app now and sign up using promo code SMOKE for your shot at the crown. That's right. New customers who bet $5 will get $200 in bonus bets instantly. And all customers can bet on Super Bowl 58 and get it matched in a bonus bet. Wondering what you can use $200 in bonus bets on? Combine multiple bets together from Super Bowl 58 for a shot at an even bigger payout. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use the promo code SMOKE and bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code SMOKE, only a DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Welcome back. All the smoke, Jack. Hey. Last show of this nice run we've had. Hell of a run, man. Man, we went to New York, did our thing, came to LA, did our thing. We get to finish off with one of the homies. One of the homies. You know, someone that's, that's obviously did his thing in uh, on the gridiron, but also has been able to transition um, into what was next. Uh, been in the media space 20 years. 18. 18, 18 years. Touching, coming up on 20 years. Uh, someone Jack and I both look up to, man. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the show, Keyshawn Johnson. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. you, man. Yes, sir. Thank you, bro. Always. Appreciate you. Welcome, bro. You know, Welcome. When they called and said, would you do? I'm like, come on, man, stop. Yeah. Why would you even ask me that question? Yeah. Because they, <laughs> what I do. Because, because they know you don't like light-skinned people from UCLA, which you just clearly yeah. made Well, it's not, clear. it's not that I don't like <laughs> light-skinned people <laughs> from UCLA. I done had a number of friends that went to UCLA that happened yeah. to be fair-skinned. Right. Yeah. I'm just saying. Fair-skinned. <laughs> you know, there's certain sport over there that just seemed like they always integrate the lighter guys into the equation at UCLA. With right? the curly tops. With the curly tops. <laughs> I don't care if it was Matt Barnes, Jelani, uh, Chris Ed, Johnson, Ed O'Banning, Chris, Tony, Tony, like, Tony, yeah. just I can go on and on and on. They always <laughs> seem to get them one. Yeah. They got, they had, the last one, was ball, right? That was the, the last light, really light one was ball. Yeah, yeah. He said really light. Yeah. <laughs> well, you yeah. done got darker since college, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because when you, when, you when you see Max, you're like, uh, hey, he light? Oh, shit. He <laughs> said since college, you done got darker, huh? Um, obviously, ESPN for a number of years, you've yeah. transitioned over to Fox, uh, where you're doing Undisputed, but also congratulations, you're doing your podcast as yeah, well. Congrats. Yeah, And I like how you said, again, this is this is about business and, and capitalizing on your IP. So your your, your Undisputed deal was every, uh, separate, and then everything else that comes with you was a la carte. It got to be, right? I mean, it, you, when you look at it, when I when I first sat down and, and was coming from... Um, ESPN, I was in DC with my family. We was the kids, we went to DC, right? We was on our way to Turks and Caicos, but I wanted we stopped in DC. We're in New York first. And then um when I got the call that they was gonna terminate me and still pay me, I'm like, oh cool, I will figure it out. I don't even trip. I'm getting my money, I'm getting my bread. That's the double what thing, right? I'm gonna land on my feet because I'm good at what I do. And we go to we uh in DC, then we go to Turks, the Fox people, they they like, we coming to see you. Yes. We instantly Oh, it did 24 hours. Mm. We just to try to figure this out. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, cool. So we we try to figure it out or whatever. But along the way, I tell my agent, I say, look, man, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this deal this way this time. We're not going to do it the traditional way. We're going we gonna to break this shit down yeah. into pieces. Got to. You see, like you Bite said, this is, not, this is not a happy meal. Yeah. We're not getting ready to mm-hmm. get a drink, fries, and a burger. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> and so when we broke it down... Uh, Charlie Dixon allowed me, him and him and uh, Silverman and, and Shanks, they allowed me to retain my audio and digital rights. So when I went to shop, you know, I talked to pretty much everybody in the in the space, and I just came back and I said, you know what? Since I'm over here with these folks, I might as well stay over here with them instead of trying to go somewhere else, you know, that don't really know me. As, as well as they gonna know me because they gonna have an opportunity to see me every day in the building, work with me. Now they gonna know my personality, know who I am, all that. So we strategically just planned it that way and and said, you know, and then probably about, I think about two months in, I said, you know what, I'm ready to do the pod. Let's let's pick up the phone. Let's call them and let's 
figure it out. Mm-hmm. Dope. Uh, misunderstood by some, uh, uh, respected in this space for for the for his longevity in this space. What do you think is something getting a chance to work with him now that is is a misconception or 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 people may not get about Skip Bayless? Man, you know, I, I when I first took the job, Matt and Jack, people was like. Keyshawn gonna kill that dude. But th- because they don't know me. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? They I can work with anybody. I walk in, work with anybody any given day at all. I said but, that I was one of them. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> see, see, because he because Jack I, know me differently. Too real. You know what I'm saying? But I also understand my paper. Yeah. You see yeah, what I'm saying? I'm not yeah. fit to let somebody fuck my money off with no stupid, silly shit. This right. shit is entertainment, it's fun. That's all it is. It ain't personal. Right. Ain't nothing personal. So to answer your question. You know, it's fun working with him. The man is a wealth of knowledge. He's been around for a long time. Um, but I think what people see in him is, is a 70-plus-year-old white man with blonde hair. And in the world that we live in, that's what we see, especially as black folk. We see that and we go, okay, it's a white dude who's talking reckless about athletes all the time. But that's not true. You see what I'm saying? He ain't like that. Nah, but people's like that. minds, then the, the stuff happened with Shannon, so it really went crazy. Mm-hmm. Everybody automatically assumed, oh, this dude, he just wanted to get rid of Shannon. and Everybody that don't know Skip. Don't, don't know Skip. Yeah. And don't know how it went down, the way it went, because they're not in the building. Right. They don't get all the information. You see what I'm saying? Once I got, because you know me, I'm going to ask. We've been in the building, so <laughs> yeah, we know. Yeah, I'm going to ask. What the fuck happened? Tell me, <laughs> tell me the truth. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because I got to work with you. Yeah. I need to know the truth. Yeah. I need to know what's happening at all points in times. Like I told him when I first sat down with him, I said, look, man, check this out. We sat in the backyard, nice out here in California, out at the beach. It was beautiful. Can't beat it. You can't beat it. Ain't Atlanta, you know. It ain't all freezing. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I don't airport, airport ain't closing. <laughs> Brown I mean, grass. Come to think of it, I don't know the last time LAX closed down. Ever. Yeah. I, that, that I know of. Ever. Yeah, but Atlanta, every time I start, <laughs> can't get out of Atlanta. But anyway, when I sat down with him, I said, man, this, this, for me, there's only a couple things in my criteria working with anybody is I don't need no race, no racial bullshit at all, no homophobia, none at all. None. I don't need nothing slipping out, nobody's miles or nothing, and we good. If it ain't, if you, Simple. Because I don't care about my career. I don't care that you... You you poke fun in my career or whatever you may you may say that Terrell Owens was better. That's cool, good. He got better numbers. He played longer. I could combat all that. You see what I'm saying? As long as you don't say nothing out of pocket, we ain't got no problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We ain't got none at all. We gonna work. We gonna be in this mm-hmm. business as long as he wanna be in it with me. I'm gonna be in it with him, and we gonna rock. That's right. That's the way I look at it. Plain and right. simple. You know. Uh, he recently said you were the first person he texts after the cowboy loss, or first person you were the first person to text him after the cowboy loss. I and did I, the same I, thing. I, to, I, I did the same I, thing. I, to I, always. You, you didn't I, just text me. You text me about fifteen texts. <laughs> no. So so I'm I'm always with Mike. Me and Michael Irvin. We watch the games on Sundays. You know, at the little sports bar, or whatever. So I'm always with him. You know, I'm always catching him in, in awkward moments, take a picture of him, put it on social media. He's sitting there sweating, biting his nails, looking crazy, right? Life or death still. Oh, man. One time, I was trying to think, what game was it? Oh, it was a game. They got their ass ran out the building. San Francisco? No, I wasn't saying. It was Buffalo. It was a Buffalo oh, yeah. Bill game. Mike, so I'm talking to somebody like I'm talking to y'all. Mike here. And I turn, and I told my boss, where the fuck Mike go? And like, man, he just went out. So he thought he was being slick and tried to creep past the thing. So the way the sports bar set up, I can go to the window because it's open. That's and I took talk. a picture of him trying to creep out. He saw me. <laughs> it was like, it's like, check this dude out trying to run. <laughs> then last week in the Green Bay joint, he came straight from NFL Network because the game started early. As soon as the show was over, the game started. So I text him. I'm going, y'all already down 10-0. The game hadn't even started. Oh, man, you, you shut up, man. Stop playing. So he get there. Like the middle of the second quarter, he got a suit on. He fresh. He looked fresh out the cleaners, right? Twenty seven nothing. Ooh. He done went. I'm looking for him at halftime. This joker done went and changed clothes. So I got him before and, and after, <laughs> and put it on social media. All uh, people was killing him. Uh, it's some of the funniest. I done caught him in some crazy moments, man. They playing San Francisco. He's sitting there biting his nails. At the bar, he's sitting, he, he wasn't at our booth, right? He got up and went to the bar. And I had my little partner with me. And I sat over there and zoomed in on him. He's sitting there going, 
Why they get work? See, oh, I ain't have why I answer my phone. <laughs> you don't even yeah, I mess with Skip no all the time. To me. Cause he he's such a passionate cowboy dude. Right. That it's an easy target. Oh yeah, it's a layup. Very easy target. Man, that's a bunny. <laughs> yeah. Very easy layup. What you think the state of the NFL is today? I mean, the state of it is, is first of all, it's good football. Um, you know, Patrick Mahomes is in it. Now Lamar's in it. You know, you got both of them. You know, the Brock Purdy situation is what it is. But being able to see the league starting to, to a degree, starting them, I think, change their thought process when they're hiring people. You know, because you look at my man, Antonio Pierce, mm -hmm. he like us. Right. When the last time you seen a coach in anything yeah. other than a high school like with a tattoo on his neck and earrings? Yeah. When the last time, other than a high school coach? Yeah. Ain't nobody. So now, as a professional... Coaches got to go to league meetings and everything too. So he's going to be walking in with his earring, his tat on his neck. Then people going to go crazy. But you can see that Dan Campbell, they, the ex-player, you know, they interviewing my man Aaron Glenn. You see that my man in Houston, um, D'Amico Ryans. So now the league is starting to take a look at the ex-players and the Gerard Mayo. Yeah. Where they starting to say New England. Before that wasn't the case. Not no. like the NBA. The NBA would take Matt Barnes and Stevie mm -hmm. Jack two years after they retire, make them head coaches. In the NFL, oh man, you're gonna have to carry water for them and all that. That shit is crazy how they treat us, even though we work so hard for them. And y'all the experts at it. It, it's, the, it's some of the crazy people say, I come to you because I'm not getting ready to be nobody slappy. Right. That's why I ain't in the business. Mm -hmm. I'd rather do TV. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm not going to climb up the ladder. I'm spoiled. You're going to make me the top choice. If I'm going to do it, I'm not working for nobody. You see what I'm saying? Other than the owner. So for me, when I retired, I'm like, man, I, no, man, it's economic suicide for one. You see what I'm saying? Compared to what I'm getting to TV. Yeah. And, you know? you and I got to deal with the stress and move my family from LA to Florida or Atlanta. So no, I ain't doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. I'm a Cali kid. Mm -hmm. Thoughts real quick on the rule changes over the years. You were someone that played in a very physical era. Thought on the rule changes trying to obviously protect well, more now. Well, the, the rules have always evolved over the years, right? They always change them and tweak them. It's, it, it's a passing game. They want to protect the quarterbacks, but they also want to see high scoring games. So they just allow people to run up and down the field without being touched. Like you said, when, when I played – you know, which seems like a long time ago, but it really wasn't long ago. You know what I'm saying? What was your last players, year? My last year was 07. Okay. Was my, but but there are players that just recently retired that I wound up playing with. Mm -hmm. So they were still part of those rules. Right. These dudes nowadays, I've been telling them all the time, man, y'all running, y'all running butt naked across the field. Ain't nobody touching y'all. You know, y'all catching balls. They throwing the ball at alarming rates. These dudes catching 100 plus balls every year. You know, but that's the league. They want to see the excitement. They want to see that sort of stuff. So they're trying to protect the quarterbacks and they change the rules. The dudes go across the middle and get touched. They just run right across the middle. I wish, I wish like hell. And they get like 35, 40 million to run across the middle. When we was probably getting, I think my my biggest salary, well, I, I, my biggest salary, base salary was probably like six and a half. You know what I'm saying? Not in counting signing bonuses and all that stuff. These dudes touching like 30 and 35, man. And not getting touched. And not getting touched. But the rule they need to put in is when receivers do catch, how to how to they be getting hit low. Like the uh, the receivers come across the middle or like uh the, the tall receivers running and the uh DBs always come low on the catches. That that's the rule they well, need they to cut change, out. But they they do to some degree emphasize that rule a little bit. They don't want you to be exposed. Yeah. So they try to protect you. That's how most degree. receivers get hurt. Yeah, but I don't, yeah, I, I tell them all the time, hit me anywhere but my legs. You yeah. Because they say the head injuries and stuff. I'm like, man, I, I'd rather get hit in the head than mm -hmm. get hit in my mm -hmm. legs. Exactly. Right you know, because I need my legs to be able to get my check. Well, you mm -hmm. seen two hits like that in the recent playoff games where the tight ends knees damn they got took out because of that same shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what happens. Who is the face of the NFL right now to you? The face of the NFL? Yeah. It's Patrick Mahomes. By far. Yeah. See, that, see, here's the thing. Lamar Jackson should get the opportunities. But we live in a corporate world. And I don't necessarily know when they look at Lamar, if they look at him and say, he could be the face for a number of reasons. Okay? He's deep south. 
So they already, you know how they Florida. They, how we talk, ah, yeah, yeah. That's how they are because in 2019, he won the MVP. Yeah. Have you seen him on any commercial? No. Nope. About to win it again this year. And he's going to win it again. That's the messed up part about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when you bring it to the attention, people get, they get all, they don't want to talk That's about right, that. Right. Truth it's hurt. like, well, wait a minute, man. Hold on. This dude, two-time MVP in six years, <laughs> he getting ready to probably go to the Super Bowl. Meanwhile, the dude that we all keep hyping up, keep going home and Josh Allen, but y'all keep putting him on EA Sports and putting him on this and putting him on that, and he keep getting sent to the crib. So you, you, you look at it and you say, how could this be? This can't be this way this year with him. They've got to figure out because they did it in basketball with Lil Penny, right? right. Penny didn't ego. like to talk, mm. but Nike got so creative. I love this. That's that a they call. figured up. That's, huh? a, that's a great call. I love that idea. Yeah, think about it. They gotta... figured out because when you think about Lil Penny, and obviously this is when we all first started playing and becoming professionals and making money and whatnot. We looked at that. They brought in Tyra Banks and Chris Rock. So they bought a, a beauty in, then they bought a funny man in, and Penny didn't really have to do a whole lot. Which is okay. They need to figure that out with Lamar because they say Lamar doesn't have a personality, so to speak. Like he's not outspoken type, you know, uh, personality. He got a little Southern twang to him. That's okay though. If you really want to make it work, I can make it work for you in a heartbeat. I promise you. I can put the shit together if from a marketing standpoint. If you really wanted to do it though. If you really wanted if you to really do it. If you really wanted to do if it. If you really wanted to do it, mm -hmm. I can put him in all the little state farm commercials and yeah, everything else. Yeah. If you really wanted to do it. Yeah, that's the Because thing. think about it. What MVPs in any league? Not doing that. Not doing commercials and stuff. Not doing everything. In any league. Some dudes ain't even in the uh, MVP conversation to get commercials. <laughs> Still doing yeah. it, right. Come on now. Got yeah, right. But that's, you know, that those two dudes to me are the face of the league. You know, to me. But I could be wrong. They may tell me it's TJ Watt or something. I, I don't know. Those two dudes to me are. In your opinion. Yeah. Real quick, let's take a cheers break. What are we sipping on right now, Keith? Tell them. Man, this is Mejente, man. Yeah, it's the Mejente tequila. Salute. You dig? Where can they get you, that at? Get it everywhere. All over the place. <laughs> he <laughs> said, yeah, fuck we, giving you just a store. No, we get, get it everywhere. everywhere. You can Google it in the fine locations. You got it at the... All them stores, man, them Total Wines and Biv Mo's and restaurants. That's and when you're drinking, you ain't got to go, ah. They, I already told you that. Even, even, though, even though you yeah. did it. He, no, yeah. but, but the thing is, I was he, was, he, was, for it. he was trying his best <clears throat> to figure out how to burn his chest. And he's like, damn, it didn't burn. Chest. I don't know. Something ain't right. It's smooth. Then a motherfucker. South Central LA in the 70s. You was a 70 baby. What was it like in South Central in the 70s? In the 70s? You bet I was a kid. I'm an 80s baby. No, so it's South, so growing up in South Central LA at the time, it's South LA now. We changed the name uh quite some time ago because after the riots, then when I went to build all the shopping centers and stuff like that, we just changed the name, called it South LA opposed to South Central because it had a stigma. Kind of like a, a, a stigma to it. Man, growing up, you know, um, in the 70s, so to speak, and then into the 80s, growing up in that area, it's just the same shit. Gun violence, drugs, you know. That was the height of it, a though. Of, you don't even know. That was the height you, of it. You, you don't even know. But having a, having a, I, I always like to say it this way, a, a, a family of crime. You know, I, it's, right. the, it's it the reality. It That's how I grew up. It I grew up in a family of crime, you know, uh, and I was so crazy because I took my homie, my partner home the other day and he still lived on the east side and I just was driving down Manchester looking, what type of shit is this? This shit look, man, this shit look way different and I haven't been that far east in a couple years, several years. I mean, I've been shit probably 15 years. So I'm looking and I'm telling him, I'm like, man, this here? Oh, no. I, I'd be scared to go get a hamburger over here because it just <laughs> looks so crazy. You know what I'm saying? It look, it look wild, man. And, and just remembering growing up and having, you know, dealing with drugs and dealing with gang violence and guns and all that sort of stuff. It's funny, though, you know, because I've seen it up close in person in real life. You know what I'm saying? I done been dumped on. I done been shot. My sister done been shot. So it's like, for me, I look at it and I'm just like, man, I'm so glad. Ooh, I got smart real quick, you know? Because it's it was tough then, it's still tough now. Um, you know, it, it's just one of them things where it's like, man, I don't want to have to deal with this. I'm so right. glad I, you know. And I take my kids, I take my kids over all the time. Got to see I want, it. Oh, got to see that. Feel it. 
Man, they got to see it. Mm-hmm. They growing up rich. That's who made you who you are, though. Man, they growing yeah. up rich, though. Yeah. They, I tell my son all day long, he go to the private schools and all. I tell him all day long, man, you got to, because he out on the court. And he played, it's so funny, because he played, uh, when we were living in New York in the, the pandemic, he played at um, at uh, uh, in the Bronx at, um, oh, shoot, man, what the hell's his name? Gacho? Gacho's. Yeah. He was with the Gacho's, what's his name? Basketball coach. Uh, oh my they they threw, under the, threw under the rug at Arizona. Oh, uh, I was just talking Book. about Book yeah, they, 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 so he played with Book. And yeah. So, them little dudes, you know, because he only 11. Them dudes was like, at the time, they was like eight years old, man, waking up at five o'clock in the morning going to play basketball. So, I had to tell him, man, all that light skin shit with that curly hair and shit, man, you got, you see them dudes? Them little dudes got no teeth. They going to have tattoos on them and they going to be dunking on you because you out here pretty. You got the curls and the whole light skin. No, 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 ain't nothing against you, Matt. But you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. I, I had go. to tell him, yeah, and I told him the other night when he was at uh, at uh, out at uh, sports academy. How old is he now? He 11. I okay. had to tell him because he got a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. He got he got some stuff, and I had to tell him, said, man, you got to be a little more aggressive. You got to become a dog like you starving to death, like you ain't got nothing, like you can't go home and eat. You can't be thinking, oh, I, I got. Lobster in the refrigerator when I go home. No, you got to think the refrigerator empty. You got to think the same way I thought. If you really want to take it to the next yeah, level, yeah, you want to be great. Oh, same thing. So I told my nephew. My nephew grew up in my household with me and my whole family, and he went on and he was a dog in the league. He keeps getting hurt, but when he's healthy, he's ridiculous. I tell him the same thing. I said, man, you cannot think about Lamborghinis and shit being parked in the driveway. They ain't yours. Right. You, in order for you to get that, mm-hmm. you're going to have to approach it a different Change way. Change your mindset. Change well, your I mean, mindset. That, that's a tough, I mean, because I mean, you live in the valley where I live at. There's a there's a ton of us that did it, and so our kids don't have to do it, but what's that fine line of letting them know it's, everybody don't live behind gates and go to private school, but still have that dog and you still have that appreciation for the other side. So what we try to do is we try to show them, right, by taking them doing Thanksgiving, out to places to help the homeless or whatever, Christmas time. I want y'all to see, once upon a time, as an 11-year-old kid, that was your father, okay? I was I, I slept in a car for a year. So I want y'all to have a real perspective on life. All this glitz and glamour, like Matt said, behind, uh, you know, gates and all the private school and all that, man, that ain't, that's not real. What's real is when you go east of La Cienega. That's real. When you go in that pocket, over in that area, that's real. And I try to get them that perspective. When we go to USC games during the season, I ride through the neighborhood. I get off the freeway and deliberately on purpose take the long route. So I want them to be able to see. You know, like, damn, you used to live in this type of house. Man, that house looks like it's about the size of our garage. Yes, it is. And all of us, all 10 of us, in a two bedroom lived mm-hmm. in that. And was happy. And was happy as pie. So don't be didn't telling know me no better. bullshit yeah. about. <laughs> What we eat tonight. Right. Mm-hmm. Thanks. What was, how were you able as a youngster to be able to navigate, like you said, growing up in a life of crime and then having a goal of, I need to get out. What was, how, how were you able to stay Man, focused? Matt, you know, so, <laughs> so when you're young, like I was at the time, I was doing shit from a criminal standpoint that was ridiculous. That you sit back and you go, there's no way. This dude, <laughs> ain't no way in the world, you know what I'm saying? But I grew up that way. What was your nickname? Man, it was Keyshawn. It was, okay. just, it was Keyshawn. Wasn't, right. no, wasn't no nicknames, wasn't okay. nothing. It was just Keyshawn. But we, as a group, it 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 it, it make me laugh and chuckle because I kind of know, you know what I'm saying? I like know how we work. And a lot of my friends, you know, at the end of the day, they just like, you know, everybody started getting shot, dying, going to jail, all that sort of stuff. And you say, well, what made me turn? So what made me turn is I got older. And as I got older, you start getting a little bit older. You start saying, man, when I get 18, they're going to throw away the motherfucking, they're going to throw that key away if I get in trouble. You know? So now it's like, okay, whatever it is that I need to do to get myself through for these next couple of years, I need to, I need to do it and be done with it and try to work on football, basketball. So, you know, because I played hoops too, but I just couldn't grow. I didn't, you know, y'all, you, when I saw y'all when I walked in, I said, damn, you big. Yeah, <laughs> like, because, you know, when you play like, I played it. I played against like Stace Bozeman, Jay Kidd, all them. Them dudes weren't tall. Man, mm-hmm. Stace was nice though. But they wasn't Shit. tall. You know what I'm saying? They was normal mm-hmm. height. Y'all and you trees, big, man. And you big for your job. I'm huge yeah. for my job. Mm-hmm. Niggas all the Jelani, Jelani all man, he's seven feet tall. <laughs> like so, when you start to look at it, 
I was small. I didn't have yeah. no handles. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I couldn't shoot. I could do everything else. I could defend because I'm long. I could jump out the gym. But I couldn't do that guy. So I said, you know what, man? I'm going to just play football because I know at the end of the day, it's getting here. ready to be a real check. I'm good here. And so I said, you know, I'm going to stop all the silliness and it's either I'm going to sink or swim. And that's how I, that's mm -hmm. the true story. I said, I'm going to sink or swim. And if I swim, it's going to go down Ooh. to a whole nother level. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, once it yeah. started hitting, I used to date a chick from UCLA. Light-skinned chick, too. Pretty, too, huh? Pretty from the Bay Area. Pretty. Ridiculous hair, the whole thing, everything, blah, blah, blah. But she was from the Bay. Think about it. Whole different world. Different mentality. Mm -hmm. You know, she told me, Jack, I shouldn't play football. It's a modern-day <laughs> slavery, right? I looked at her. I can't. I'm not dating her. <laughs> you done lost your damn mind, girl. Worry, I'm straight up. She, that's, no, that's what she, because she, the Bay Area, you know, yeah. the Bay Area, they, they, they Independent they, thinkers. Yeah, yeah they independent yeah, thinkers, and yeah. everything is, and I, incense and all. I'm like, come on now. All that Stevie Wonder every day in my house. Fine, is, though. Fine. Fine as can be. All right, yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, yeah. hey. Yeah. I know. Ridiculous. <laughs> everybody wanted her. Yeah. I went and, I went and got her, but everybody wanted her, right? Yeah. So at the end, she tried to tell me I shouldn't play football because it's a modern day slavery. You had to, now, give, her, look, you had to give her back. I'm like, I can't, I ain't gonna be able to walk down the aisle with this now because yeah. you, you're tripping. Yeah. You're telling me you want me to go do something different. This is my calling. You know, football's my calling, not nothing else. You telling me go do something different, shit, I'm gonna get 50 years. If that's, cause <laughs> right. that's all I know. Yeah. What you want me to do? What, what you, you want? want me to do? What you want? She not knowing the other option, though. Yeah. She don't know the other option. No, she don't know the other option. Yeah. She going to UCLA to be a doctor and all that. And I'm like, that's cool and everything, but I'm getting ready to hit pay dirt real soon. Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not. Pay you know? dirt. Dorsey High School, West LA College, SC, a true, with all due respect, true, true, true LA legend. Uh, who were yeah, some I'm of the guys? We can, get, we, can get, we can grab his bottle, just bring it in here, put it right on the table. Who were some other uh, legends and, and, and guys you grew up with uh, that people may not know, just straight L.A. dudes that, that really uh, did it big? At Dorsey or just in L.A.? No, just gym? L.A. in general, just like your era. Um, basketball, I start with Tremaine, folks, Chris Johnson, um, my man, um, I'm throwing a blank. Uh, I'm throwing a blank now. How the hell did I throw a blank just now? No, <laughs> no, my man. What's the name? You gonna help me with him? Charles no, Barry. not not the Bannies. What's his face? The basketball coach from UConn. Um, Kevin, Ali. Kevin, Kevin Ali. Kevin Ali. So that was that was part of the the basketball world. Then they had dudes like Ford and it was some other cats. But then growing up along the way. Dora Strawberry and all them was, was mm. I was a puppy. That was your OG. The, but those OG. were my yeah. big boys. Yeah. E Eric Davis and Dora Strawberry mm -hmm. and Chris Brown. Them. Those were the baseball cats that I grew up watching because I played baseball too. So I idolized them. Then in terms of football, you had uh, the late Chris Mills, uh, Chris Mims that played for the Chargers, went to Dorsey, first round pick, played for a long time, played in San Diego. Um, who else? My teammates, Lamont Warren. Played for the Indianapolis Colts for a long time. And we had so many. We had, off my high school football team, we had 12. Sherman Shaw, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was my college roommate. I was, we stayed together in college and we went to high school together. But he went to UCLA, I went to SC, but we were roomies. Um, we had, man, it was a ton of, it was, it's so many, it's so many great athletes that came out of South Central LA. That's like, it's just crazy. It's just a ton of dudes. You know, I can't think of all the names off the top of my head. But it was a bunch, not only that, those dudes out in the valley that that was part of LA Unified, the valley is watered down now. Like for public mm -hmm. schools, it's like No, nah, you can't be. No, I think the last, there. I think the last real go getter out of a public school might be Gil. Gilbert. Out of might Grant. be Gilbert, mm -hmm. right? Out of mm -hmm. public school. Everybody else is kind of like mm -hmm. private school suckers for the most part. <laughs> did, 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 did <laughs> boys in the hood predict a good picture of what a kid how a kid grows up that want to go to SC that live in Cali? It's, it's it's absolutely predict. So you remember the highlight yeah. of, of Kevin Hicks? That was a real so yeah. That's that Kevin Hicks. That yeah. was a real dude. I think it was nice. So wait, <laughs> Jack, you know how good our high school team was? He checked out. Because he couldn't get on the field. Couldn't get on the field. We was that deep, though. We was so Lamont Warren. Well, first off, it was Ben O'Brien. 
Then it was Lamont. Then it was Kareem, which is, was Shaw Marshall at the time. Those were our backs, our running backs. Kevin had to leave and go to Crenshaw because he wasn't going to get on the field at all. Just wasn't. And he was legit, legit. And he wound up going to college and, and, and then he, so much did he wind up getting in trouble and spent a little pokey time, you know. He, he got a little, got about 25 years. Mm, not you know? a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, a little yes, bit. Yes, yeah. Because it just, you know, if it's sports, man, and if you're not in sports and entertainment and growing up in South LA, you either going to, you know, go to jail, yeah, be killed, right. something, because it's crash just- Crash or burn. Crash or burn. Mm -hmm. You got to figure it out. But yeah. we, had, we had some cats, yeah. man. We had some dudes. Favorite memory of that sea, or just the time you was there? Look, look at that, that smile. Look at <laughs> Outside of women. <laughs> no, man, no, no. My wife will be watching this, so she, <laughs> you know, them big, even though you ain't got nothing to do, I, I yeah. didn't even know you. You were still in diapers. Right. 30 you years know? ago. Man, 30 years ago. Still worried about what I'm doing then. Um, when did the Rose, when did the Rose born graduating? So, well, it's a, it, it, it's an effect, right? It's like a, it's like a, a, a trickle down effect. So I win the Rose Bowl. I get drafted number one overall. I have a crazy party at uh, House of Blues. You, you was too young. You, you wasn't even in college yet. I don't think you went though. I think Jelani. I think I did. Yeah, I think you did go to my draft party. I, I feel like you did. And then you graduate from school. Something that most dudes in my position, they not even gonna do. They not even gonna think about it. So I had a draft party, Jack at this spot called House of Blues on Sunset. I don't even know if you was in LA at the time, the House of Blues was still cracking, but it was like the spot. So I had about 2,000 people at my draft party. I had anywhere from Deion Sanders to Tupac to you just name, any and everybody. It was crazy. It was on a whole nother level. No, it was, it was, man, where my name? phone at, man? <laughs> I said, Pac in there, nigga. Man, it, it was, it was, it was so crazy that it was another, so if you know LA and you know La Cienega, let's call it Crescent Heights right there. Mm -hmm. If you know that stretch, they had to shut the whole stretch down because there was another 3,000 people in the streets trying to get into the motherfucker. They couldn't get in because it, it was crazy. It was, it was like a whole nother level, right? So that, and then why I bring it up is because at this time, it wasn't about tequila. It was the vodka it was, craze. Oh, it was vodka that it time. Was, it was the Belvies and the Grey Goose. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I, I probably that. had a bottle of Grey Goose or Belvie to myself. Ooh, I think it was Goose. That's a nasty. No, night. no, but we back then, that. no, that was, that was it. That was it. That was it. That was it. Belvie did was it. And I had a midterm the next day. Ooh, so guess nasty. what I did? I left the hotel across the street. Nobody ever thought that I would go do in the midterm. I went and took the midterm. I swear to God, on my daughter's grave, I didn't cheat or nothing. B plus. And the story still fresh, lives fresh, to this day at the university up. because I didn't need to. I just hit pay dirt. I'm about 30 million from I, I, I could chill. <laughs> and I jumped in my Porsche, went to school. Jumped, jumped in my, my Porsche. Porsche. I heard yeah. it. I heard it. Yeah. I heard it. Yeah. I heard it. Well, I had to get, yeah. I, well, I had to get my this Porsche. This is before NIL. I had to get my Porsche. <laughs> Wait, though, I had just. Top down. Yeah, I had course. to get my Porsche. <laughs> Wait though, so this look. nigga King crazy. So yeah. that's me. That's prime. I had to get my mm -hmm. That's Lawrence Phillips. Yeah, Coolio. Yeah, you know that's Jim Hill. Yeah, Jim Hill. Same hair. Same Jim, haircut. Same haircut. Everything. Right. <laughs> same haircut. Ain't nothing changed. Wait, hold on. Let me see this real quick. So now you just want to see Pop, man. No way. I'm gonna get there. Got ice, ice tea. tea in the ice tea in the boy, uh, yeah, kid, kid play. Yeah. He got prime. I'm gonna find. I'm gonna find my pock picture. Hold on, wait. I'm gonna find it. Red on. Man, I didn't even invite him. <laughs> I didn't even invite him. Prime, prime had the red prime, on. The prime hat came. Five prime chains. came. And so they summons me to the foundation room because I'm running around hosting and you know everybody they watching everybody perform and all that. They say, man, Dion want to talk to you. Dion, who? Dion Sanders, man, Prime, he here. So what the fuck are you doing here? I ain't invite. So okay, cool. So I go up. Prime sitting in the, he in the foundation room. See, say Prime though. Prime got jewels on everything. Now that's like y'all meet Michael Jordan for the first time, right? Yeah. So I'm sitting in. I'm going. Man, that's Prime. I'm getting ready to go up against. What him. year is this? This is in '96. Okay. So Prime, you know he he that dude. I'm glad we're so I'm like, damn Prime. So I'm sitting there talking to him. But what he wanted to do was talk to me, educate me 
on the pitfalls in NFL, what to look for. You know, just wanted to be a big. I'm like, man, this dude came. I didn't even invite him, but he wanted to be there. Right. He wanted to see. In the real. One. He was yeah. That's why him and I we like thick as thieves right now. You know, just because I appreciate that. That mm -hmm. that's that's some real. He ain't have to do that. No, not yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, most dudes have been hating. <laughs> Facts. They've been sitting. Man, I'm trying to find this picture. Hold on, I'm gonna find this picture for you. I know I got it in here somewhere. Matt, that's you know Matt. We was we was we was man. It was turned up. I could just tell you that it was. Oh, here you go right here. Oh, Shug too. Yeah, MC, all and, MC Hammer, Snoop, Hammer. all of them. They all came through. They all came through. Man. That's love. Because love. because what you got to think about. Down. Think about man. it though. It's like you from Sac, right? If you get drafted, all Sac got Everybody, drafted. Everybody, that's right. how it was. Mm -hmm. I think I got drafted in LA. Yes, yeah, just and different. Imagine, LA like, is a little different. Man, I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like he wanted us, and he got you. Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. We down. getting ready to, we getting ready to turn it up and and do our thing. And so, for me, it was just like being able to see everybody there, man, and and graduate from school and celebrate the thing, and that that's, dope. that's the yeah. The graduation like, you don't was get dope that. too, because like you said, you didn't have to do it. No, I didn't have you to. Didn't do need it. it. And then I fucked them up though completely though. You know, because USC, you know. It, you know, and people at USC, you know, that's what, but that's how I came. You see, I got the Kente cloth on mm -hmm. at the graduation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they really was like, what is this, HBCU? What is yeah, this guy doing? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah. That, that was just me. I just, I moved to my own beat. I don't move to other people's beats. Mm -hmm. The damage you could have did in the NIA, I'm sure you did very well at SC. Man, the you know, to, you be, to be honest with you, I didn't, people all say that, they all say that the bag. But assume. They assume. Okay. Man, I swear to God, on my, on, I, and I put this on my daughter's life, man, I probably had the most money I ever got out of USC from, from coaches or something, total probably two Gs. That was it. Mm. They didn't give me nothing. Nothing at all. I didn't I didn't have a fake job. I didn't do nothing. A <laughs> fake job. No, I didn't do none of that. I feel you. Some dudes had the fake jobs. You know, back then you can get the fake job, mm -hmm. but they didn't give me nothing. And I made... Tons of money for the university, and, and, so, the, and the bigger the type, of, as big as a player you was, that's why everybody thought. That's what right they assumed. No, like, they assumed. How, how did they keep him home? No, you know but I saying? really, to be honest with you, I really didn't need nothing because yeah. my family, you know, they get a life of crime They're in the streets, so it, it, I, I was cool. I was good. I, I wasn't really tripping. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't need nothing. I was right at the house. I get in my Honda Accord, bam, right down the street to aunties, get some food if I needed to. I had my apartment, whatever. My mom was living in, so was, I was good. I wasn't really tripping. So what could you have done in the NIL world? I didn't have to put me on layaway. <laughs> they couldn't afford him. They would have to put me on layaway. They couldn't afford him, Stat. No, they had to put me on layaway, real talk. No, they, just... <laughs> <laughs> they had to put me on layaway. Couldn't afford me. It'd be so expensive. Can you imagine? I'm, I'm no, I'm asking. I'm asking. I could. It would have been, been the number one pick out of SC. Them dudes, them dudes making like, you know, six million right now, they that would have been triple. Easy. Oh, it'd have been so triple, so easy. You know, it was because back then, the shoe game wasn't what it is now, right? Mm -hmm. So they could actually sign with shoe companies in college. We couldn't do that back then. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm the first dude and the last dude in the NFL that played professional football to have a lifetime deal with Adidas. Most people get lifetime deals to play basketball. Right. You know, you know, LeBron yeah, and them type of dudes. Yeah. Man, I've been I've been with Adidas since 96. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I don't even play no more. But imagine if I could have struck a deal when I was in college. Oh, Money. if I was right now, oh man, it'd be crazy. Oh, it'd be crazy. <laughs> but my lifestyle was my lifestyle was good though. So I, you know, I lived in Westwood. Matter of fact, I lived in the Wilshire Manning on Wilshire Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in between it was crazy because I, I just my senior year in the whole OJ situation. Was crazy. I lived at the high rise in between this Barbieri chick that he was dating and Ken Norton Jr. So I lived, I lived on like they were one, one was above me, one was below me. So I came out my apartment building one day on Wilshire. Y'all know Wilshire how it, how crazy it is. I came out my apartment building and I saw all these TV cameras and shit. Man, I, my heart dropped. I thought they was there for me, but they was there trying to get to the girl. Because she had the relationship with OJ. And I didn't know. I was like, oh man, they done, oh man, we get ready to go on probation. <laughs> they blew my shit up. <laughs> oh man, they done blew me up. <laughs> and the, the, the dude, the doorman, was like, nah, nah, they here for 
old girl, they waiting on to try to catch her. I was like, thank boy, God. thank God. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> but no, they didn't pay me. No money at all. I ain't get nothing. I got a lot of perks, but I didn't get no money. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to do apartments and, you know, opportunity to drive a car, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Free food. Yeah, all day long. Yeah, all, day, yeah, yeah. all day long. Shit like that. Yeah, because that's, that's you know, that's Hollywood. That's SC. Yeah, you right. know, even UCLA dudes was coming to SC to hang out yeah. because UCLA was so weak yeah. at, at doing shit. Yeah. And UCLA dudes <laughs> used to be over there hanging out with us. Yeah, yeah. They want to hang out with us. Y'all shit was popping. Yeah, we was popping. <laughs> Cracking. We was popping too. We was just playing a different sport. No, oh, Jelani, different. Uh, oh, Jelani right. McCoy and them, they over there want to party at our campus. UCLA, I tried to go to a party at UCLA. It was so weak. USC in the <laughs> middle of the hood. Oh. There's probably 10 going on. Yeah, it's only two USC. There. USC right, right in the middle of the hood, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah, right. I grew up right across the street. I used to sit on top of our apartment and watch the baseball games. Yeah. We used to sit on top of the buildings and watch the baseball game right across the street. That's dope. You know? Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that's, it, was, it's, it was cool being able to you know stay home and do that, mm -hmm. whatnot. As someone- What about J-Rob? J-Rob? Yeah. He cool. Yeah, that's my man. Yeah. Yeah, that's my man. I can't wait to see him. I'm gonna see him here soon. You know, he's older now. J. Rob, John Robinson is a little bit older now. So, you know, you you, you ain't got many days left. I want to see him before he yeah, check out. Yeah. You know, mm. uh, as someone who's been through it and, and have children, and hope they were able to go through it. Players are just awarded their ninth year of eligibility in college football. <laughs> Thoughts on that? <laughs> and on top of that, who got awarded nine? There's two players that just got awarded their ninth year of eligibility in college football. You didn't hear my announcement. Jack's gonna go play for Prime. He's gonna go get his four well, years yeah. at Colorado. He's gonna, he gonna be a bit. <laughs> no, seriously. He I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be a red zone receiver. But red zone is 20 yards in. He's only going 10, 10 yards in. in. He, he gonna give me an opportunity to throw it up one, two downs. If I don't catch him, going back to the sideline. Come on, man. Stop it. <laughs> she over here playing. No, we're serious. Man, I think kill game. <laughs> <laughs> but no, these dudes, no, these dudes, no, these dudes is out here playing, no. Nine years, bro. Nine, no nine years. That shit, no, nine, nine is long. I seen six. That's I long. I seen six. Six I get. Damn, I thought four six was the max. Good. No, you get five, but then it, it's so the people, you, you get a COVID hurt year. You got hurt. Yeah, so you get the fifth year, but you got the COVID year too. The COVID year is what everybody banking on, and so they, they, they do their petitions to get that COVID year. I mean, at some point, but nine. Some point, man, you ain't good. Dog. Some of you motherfuckers are sorry, dog. Okay. <laughs> no, at some point you gotta go home. You, and you didn't even catch COVID, bro. <laughs> said you gotta, no, some you some of you motherfuckers didn't even home. catch COVID. Yeah, said at some point you just gotta go home. Yeah, yeah go for home, real, man. man. You just sorry, but you ain't got it. That's not your talent is somewhere else outside of sports. That's all. No, that's real talk. Some 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 dudes, you know, it's like the, the, in basketball. I hear it all the time because you know I follow hoops and whatnot, and and, and um, my guy son play basketball. Um, and so I hear it all the time. Oh, I'm gonna hold my son back. Don't matter how many damn years you're in, it don't it. matter. Can't run from if it. If he ain't good, he ain't good. He ain't good. Oh, he, they held him back two years. Man, he's not, that dude ain't good. <laughs> I would give a fuck if you held him back a, 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 a 10 years. <laughs> no, you see it, y'all know. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Nah, hell yeah. yeah it's like, man, that dude's about. not good. Stop oh, lying to your yeah. boy. Yeah, hey. you, you sitting up talking about, oh, I think I'm gonna hold him back so he can play 14U. Man, that dude's not good, man. Let yeah. him go to school, get him education, and live life. Instead gonna, of living vicariously through your kids. Right. Gonna be 16 and 14 you boys gonna be giving him 30. <laughs> oh God. And he's 16. Man, that's the real no, that's real talk. That's exactly what be happening. Hey, he said at some point you just gotta go home. Just gotta go home. Take your I, ball and go home. Go take your ball and go. Imagine that. Y'all done play with them dudes. Dudes be dudes be so much older than they like. But you gotta think when we were coming up, we played up. We would never go down yeah, ever, never, no matter yes. what. Ever. No, you go oh, up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm eighth grade playing, going across to play varsity. So it's just yeah. like you would never think to go down. Yeah. It's but they crazy, try to go down crazy world. thinking that that's going to allow them to chase LeBron. Like, Look man, better. stop, nah, man. LeBron right. James is different, man. He was made in a factory. Yeah. <laughs> they, you know, they, <laughs> yep. stop thinking that. <laughs> right. I ain't going to happen. Uh, Caleb Williams, is he the real deal? And should the Bears take him at one? Or? Man, to be honest with you, Matt, I think he is a good quarterback. I don't know that the Bears should take him at one. It, it, you know, you want a dude to get as much money as he can get. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of factors that fall into place. You going, him going to Chicago, replacing Justin Fields, 
why you think that they got to replace Justin Fields? Because they ain't got no goddamn coaches that know what they doing. The yeah, you you this man, this man, his third year done had three office coordinators. How you ex- and two head coaches? How do you expect for him to ever with no help, no receivers? He just got DJ Moore. Just got him. Y'all allow Roquan Smith to go, who who played for Baltimore now. Y'all didn't re-sign him and give him his money. Baltimore said, we'll take him. Traded for him, gave him his money. He getting ready to play an AFC Championship game. But you want to act as though Justin Fields can't play. That's not, that, that's so far from the truth. They just, you know, I don't know, man. Sometimes these people that got this money, just because you're a billionaire, don't mean you know what the fuck you're doing. Well, Chicago it just doesn't. They're the only team where we don't know who their coach is. Like, you know the names of other coaches. Who is the fuck is they coach? Eberflus. But nobody like, nobody know that. that yeah, he, was a, he, was a, he was a defensive coordinator for Indianapolis two years ago. Yeah, nobody don't know that. Yeah, he... No. no. A lot goes in. People don't understand on the outside looking at his fans, a lot goes into where you're going as, Absolutely. as, as, as a star player. Man, let me tell a, you something, man. I was drafted the number one overall pick. I was the first. I was the queen of the ball, right? I went one in 15 mm. as a rookie. And I still balled out. Yeah. You know, I balled out, but it was it was painful balling because I ain't never experienced that. I died and went to heaven when I got Bill Parcells. You see what I'm saying? It changed my life. Man. Oh man, shit. Ooh, I get to work here. I get to do this now. Imagine if imagine if I didn't excel in football. Man, I'd be working at fucking UPS or something. You know what I'm saying? That's just the reality of it. Once you die and you go to heaven and you blessed by him who's the godfather in many people's eyes about how he conducts things, he puts you in the right position to make plays, right? I mean, if you can knock down a three and they're not letting you shoot it, what's the point? If you can knock down threes and they're like, ah, we, don't want you, we just want you to pass the ball when you get across half court. Well, what the fuck am I doing here? As a cardboard cutout, that's what happens to players in the NFL is when they get to the wrong systems because when you're a high pick- That's sports in general. Yo, know, any level of sports in general, you mm-hmm. get to the wrong system, you're right. like, come on, man. That ain't, I can't flourish in this system and operate under these conditions, you know? So if they move on from him, I hope Pittsburgh gets him, Atlanta gets him. I hope he goes to one of them type of teams where all of a sudden, I really hope Mike Tomlin get him out of anybody. If they're going to move on from for Caleb, and Caleb's a good player. But what it is is it's, it's the it's the the splash moments, right? The off schedule plays where he's running around, he's throwing the ball, doing some of that. Well, that's the same thing Justin Fields is doing. But y'all done already soured on Justin Fields. You see what I'm saying? To go get Caleb, Caleb ain't used to playing in that type of weather. He doesn't understand in Chicago, man. You got to have a strong arm. You got to be stout. You got to be. It's it's a certain physicality that comes with playing in Chicago. I don't know that Caleb got that. I don't, I don't know that. And then on top of that, you're setting the franchise back. And what they like to say is we we are changing the room for money, the quarterback room, because Justin Fields will be up in another year on it uh, or, or up for an extension. So you got to make a decision on whether or not you want to give him 200 plus million dollars or whatever that number is going to be. But if you move on from him, you get Caleb Williams. That now lessens the money that you got to pay. But three, four years from now, you're going to be looking for another fucking quarterback if that don't work. And you still, and that could be a piece you could, another piece you could be adding from the draft if you keep uh, Justin uh, Fields. A hundred percent. A receiver. Man, you go get Marvin Harrison yep. Jr. You, you can, if you can move down out of the one spot and stay within that top five and somehow figure out how to get Marvin Harrison Jr. Or to see from Washington. Yeah, I'd rather have Marvin. Though. Yeah, okay. I, I'd All just right. rather, I'd rather Marvin. But, yeah. but yes. Another receiver. Right. You can get that plus offensive line you can build. Ooh. You know? And you can build, but I don't know, man. Two for I, one. And, and if I'm Caleb, I don't want to go to Chicago anyway. It's a mess. You know, he need to go somewhere with a stable organization where the owner is good, the general manager is good, and there's no uncertainty. Yeah. Because it's uncertainty in Chicago. What was your um, combine experience like? I mean, I was, ooh, I was fresh. That's all I remember. I had the gold chain on with the big old three and diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do. I remember that. Like it was, me and my man Meek was talking about that the other day. We just, it was a good experience. I mean, I didn't do much. Mm-hmm. You I already mean, knew. Who yeah. else was uh who else was in your draft that it was back and forth between you and someone? You were the clear cut number one the whole time. I was, I was, I was, it was back and forth with me and Lawrence Phillips. Okay. Nebraska. Uh, from Nebraska, the running back. Mm-hmm. But just like anything, 
once you do the due diligence, you already knew what it oh, was. Oh, they, they once they did their due diligence, Shaq Harrison was like, and Leon Hester owner, they was like, no, we can't, we ain't, uh, this is the guy, mm -hmm. you know, period. Because when I went, so when I went to the combine, you know, I did all the little drills and stuff. I wasn't, I wasn't afraid to do nothing. And before, they didn't even let you do 225. Like you, you couldn't lift weight. Receivers didn't lift weights. It was for linebackers and linemen. So I just did the shit just on some freak shit, just to let you see what I can do. So I slid up under the 225 and bounced him off my chest like 18, 19 times and laughed at it. You know, and so they like, God, right, this big old, you know, we need this dude. And so in the interviews, I did well, obviously, in the interviews and everything. It was good experience. Then they, they, uh, it was two the Wonder Lick test. I completely botched it because I just went in. And just, I mean, I was knew I was going one, so I just went in. Boom, boom. Probably got the worst score in the history of the Wonder Lick. <laughs> don't give a fuck at the it end of the day. Give a fuck. Didn't give a fuck, and they knew it too. The the New York Giants has a psychological evaluation test that they do. It's like uh, I want to say, man, it might be five hundred words or whatever. You gotta. You know, I told them, take me off their board. I said, man, I'm not even going to be there at the fifth pick. I said, I'm not taking y'all. They said, well, we're going to – Jeremiah, Jeremiah the uh, the scout that had our area, he told me, he says, if you don't – told my agent and me, he said, if he does not take the psychological evaluation test, we're taking him off the board. And so when he told me that, too, in the little area, I told him, I said, man, y'all about to take me off. I'm not going to be there at five. It's not happening. I'm not even worried about it. Like, oh, you don't know these things. Miss me, man. I'm good. I'm straight. So I'll go and do everything I'm supposed to do. I bench. I run fast. You know, I was at the time I was about 220 and I went like 445 and 443. Uh, yeah, 445, 443. The first one I went 443. The second one I went 445. And I broad jump was whatever, 11. It was like crazy numbers and shit. Vertical was in the 39, 40. It was like everything that you look at, you go, and I had a different personality too. So in going to New York, when New York made a decision to draft me, they wasn't just drafting a player. They was drafting a player to change the entire landscape of the franchise. Meaning when I first got to New York, them Negroes was driving trucks and shit. I rolled up in a Ferrari. Next thing you know, they was wearing suits and Rolexes and you know, see what I'm saying? They, they, so my style rubbed off on them dudes. Oh, it set the standard. And, and, my aggressive nature, that's just how I played football and how I approached it. I was all business, serious business with everything. That's how you become the number one pick. Like, I didn't settle for mediocrity. It just wasn't, man, we're not doing that. And so everybody look at that. They go, man, they're crazy. Like, no, no, I'm not. It's just that I'm not accepting this as a standard in behavior. And then a year later, we're in the AFC Championship game. Mm. You see Who was your saying? quarterback? Your rookie. Man, my rookie year, I had a dude named Neil O'Donnell. Yeah. Neil O'Donnell. He was in Pittsburgh first, right? Yeah, you mm -hmm. can keep him. But <laughs> could have kept him. Yeah, you could have kept him. <laughs> then I had Glenn. Man, I played 11 seasons. I played with 18 different quarterbacks. That's what I ain't right. never had the same quarterback. See, these are the type of arguments you get into right. people when on just think about, normal yeah. barbers, barbershop conversation mm -hmm. with my dudes. I ain't never had the same quarterback two years in a row in 11 seasons. I left the game because I didn't want to play anymore. I had accomplished so much so fast. I mean, I had Pro Bowls. You know, I ate pineapple early in my career. Some of these dudes, they don't even understand that. They 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 think the Pro Bowl is something now. Like when we played, it was a real Pro Bowl. Yeah. It was real tackling and hitting. Yeah. And so I accomplished everything so early in my career, I got bored. I'm like, because I'm not, ch I wasn't never chasing greatness. My greatness was getting my mom up out them projects in an apartment building. You see what I'm saying? Well, we got to walk up them stairs and, and, and go in. And it's only one room, and it's nine, ten people laying around. That was my goal. My goal wasn't the Hall of Fame jacket, wasn't none of that. It was about getting the bread to get my mommy what she needed. That, that's all I cared about. So a lot of people, when they look at numbers and they look, they the longer you play, the bigger your numbers are gonna be. Everybody know that. You know what I'm saying? Just look at the time span that I spent. But more importantly, a consistent quarterback, especially for a receiver. Matt, think about it. If you had a a, a, a point guard. Passing you the ball with a second to go on the clock, and you trying to shoot, how do you you all off? Mm -hmm. That's how it was for me with quarterback. <laughs> man. <laughs> man, you, you know the best one I ever had was Vinny Testaverde by far. And when Vinny I got Vinny, Vinny was a thousand years old when I got him. Vinny might have been 
Then he might have been 37 at the time that I got him. Then I got him a second time in Dallas. Motherfucker had Even me 40 over. something. <laughs> right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I never started a season with the same quarterback and ended with that dude except one year. That was it. Because every year, even when I had Brad those two years, Brad wasn't there consistently. He was in and out, right. in and out, in and mm-hmm. out. But I don't complain. I don't, you know, I tell people all the time, there's only two people, two people that I would trade my career for. Two. That's it. Jerry Rice and Michael Irvin. Them the only two dudes that I would trade my career for. Yeah, Brad Johnson, Sean King. Man, I had Sean King and Brad Johnson, uh, Rob Johnson and Brad Johnson. Then I got Quincy Carter with Dallas. And then I got- But it was Brad and Sean for the Super Bowl team, right? It was, no, it was, it, I don't even know. Sean, Sean was on the team. Sean was on the team, but he didn't play. He didn't play, yeah. No, Rob Johnson yeah, was Rob, the number two. Yeah, and I yeah. think, I think, I'm trying to think. I think Sean was the three. He was. Yeah, he was the three. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I had them basically in Tampa, them three quarterbacks. Then when I got to Dallas, I started with Quincy Carter. Then they bring me Vinny. Vinny, you know, he looked like you. He got great beers yeah. and shit. So old as shit. Old as hell. So, but he was still good. He was still serviceable. Then I got Bledsoe. No, then I had Drew Henson. Should have went to baseball. He did go to baseball. I couldn't hit a curveball. <laughs> and then he had to come back to football. Then, <laughs> then I had Drew Bledsoe. Then I leave there. I go to Carolina. In one year, I played with four different quarterbacks in Carolina. In one year. I had Jake DeLong, Chris Winkie, some other dude and some other dude. So I couldn't catch a break. Mm-hmm. You know? But That's I ain't crazy. no complaining. I, I can't complain at the end of the day. Because guess what? <laughs> As long as them checks clear, man, I ain't. Right. <laughs> at oh, the end of the day. That's all Oh, man, I tell people all the time, I say, man, the only two dudes I trade my career for. And the only reason why, because Jerry's the greatest ever dude, and Michael Irvin was as cold blooded as they come. He's, that's why he got the nickname the Playmaker, and he got three Super Bowl rings. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I don't, other dudes, I don't care about nobody else and the statistics and all that. It means nothing to me. Zero. But I bet you a lot of them would love to have my post career. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Talk so. Just saying. What was your welcome to the NFL moment? Hit wise or what? Just like period. What was your what, what when you when you got to the NFL? Hit, what was the moment life. for like, damn, I'm here. I'm in I the NFL. I feel like you came on top. You you was good on the life side. Oh yeah. What was your on field NFL welcome to the NFL moment? AFC AFC divisional game. AFC divisional game against Jacksonville was my first playoff game. Um that's when I knew this shit getting ready to be easy. Because when you look at it, I dominated the game to a whole nother level, like something you ain't never seen before. I scored a touchdown there. I ran one on the ground. I caused a fumble, recovered the fumble, and got an interception in in a playoff game of a team that hadn't been in the playoffs in like 100 years. You see what I'm saying? They hadn't been in the playoffs forever. So to me, it was like, that moment against Jacksonville, because I did, from the start to finish, I just dominated. Now, all year long, I was dominating, but that particular game, the world got to see what the talent really was about. So to me, that was like, like oh, yeah, I'm here to stay. They ain't going to, they can't, they can't, they ain't going to be able to do that with me. You know, if I had a quarterback, man, if I had a, if I had a QB five years in a row, just give me one for five years in a row. All these other dudes running around with these quarterbacks, on a consistent basis, give me one for five years in a row and see what I can do. Because I, in my numbers in terms of, like when I retired, numbers-wise, there was only like one or two people in the Hall of Fame with better numbers than me when I retired. Now, everybody didn't pass me now because that's just the way it goes. But if I had one quarterback for four or five years in a row, and these dudes be out here complaining about getting the ball, I'm like, man, come on, man, stop it. They paying you a lot. Give me Patrick Mahomes. Just give me, give me Patrick Mahomes for a couple of years. I'm gonna show you what I can do. I'll show you what I can do. But it, you know, you can't control that. You just gotta do what the best you can do and how you do it. But that was my moment right there, was that that playoff game. Did you have any rookie duties coming in at the number one pick? I would miss me with all that. You really wanna know the truth, Matt? I mean, I feel like it, no, it couldn't no, tell no. you shit, but yeah, I wanna know. It couldn't tell me shit, right? Yeah, that's what so, I'm thinking. So so check this out though. So when I get there, the Jets and the rookie, they want you to sing and do all that. You know, the first thing I told them. I didn't get drafted to sing. I got drafted to play football. Mm. And if any of you motherfuckers touch me, we're going to have some real issues. Because, you know, they're going to tie you up and they're going to do I said, man, 
You can ask any of my teammates that was with me. They'll tell you, they'll say, you wasn't bullshitting. Because I wasn't playing. You know, I wasn't, I just wasn't, mess, I wasn't, my mind, when I went to New York, it was about conquering New York and, 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 and turning this team into something. You see what I'm saying? I went from 1 and 15 to AFC Championship game a year later. So you sit there and you go, this is this is why I'm here. I'm here to play football and win at a certain level, not to play around and be dancing and going to get donuts and shit. Man, I ain't got time for all that. <laughs> and, and some people are rubbed the wrong way. Yeah. It, it, you know, like, yeah. Oh, he ain't following the Okay, keep it moving. Y'all will get over it. <laughs> go get donuts. Go get Popeye's chicken. I'm, like, what? I'm the wrong, I'm the wrong one. I'm the wrong one. You know, but all my teammates though, except Sap, fat ass, hating ass, he the only one. <laughs> Everybody else loved me. He the only one. He the only one. But that's some jealousy though. That's all that. That's just that's some pure jealousy. That's the only thing that is. Is it's, it's you know, just stay in your lane. That's all you gotta do. Mind your business, leave me alone, keep my name out your mouth when we good. How long you home how long you and Sap been beefing, bro? How long has he been beefing? Oh, he beefing with you. Why would I What's the issue? What's the issue? <laughs> you, you I don't, don't, know. You don't, I don't even, even know. You don't even only know. The only thing I can point to is my looks. That's the only thing I really point to. That's the only thing I can just point to my looks and how I get out. Yeah. You see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, That's the only thing yeah. I can think of. Cause yeah. I ain't never, I ain't never had no problem with him. Yeah. See, the, the, the type of thing, I like him, man. That's the I, homie. I like him. I greet him. I hug him. I do all that when I say I ain't got a problem with you. You got a problem with me. You you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't have no, none. I saw him at the Colorado USC game. He won't take selfie with me. And then a day later, he go and trash me to the Oh, yeah, nah. That like, yeah, like yeah, what? Yeah, that so then cool. I had to, then I had to take the the the, the proper uh, etiquette and approach him in a very different manner there, Mr. Jackson. Yeah. You know, and then, <laughs> You know, I had to do. I had to gut him a different way. No, I had to gut him a different way. Very, uh, I would think, articulate. very articulate, very astute of me to, you know, I just hit him real quick with a. Yeah. Because he, it was no need to. Yeah. But I don't know. To be honest with you, Jack, man, I don't even know. Yeah, but I have no idea. Like, why you don't like me? What did I do? I'm, that's why I asked the both of y'all. But cool I, but fuck. you know, but you but you know how it is when you move a certain way. You see what I'm saying? When you move a certain way, people got a problem with how you move. I, I get that too, because we get that. You know what I'm saying? I move a certain way. I, when I walk in a room, the room moves a certain way. So some people have a problem. So when I first got there, they gave me, I don't know what it was, 60 something million, whatever, about 16 of it up front, the whole deal. So that immediately, well, him. You see what I'm saying? Him, not people. Him, mm -hmm. because the room moves different. You know how it go. It's like it, 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 I don't know. I'm I'm trying to think. Uh, with certain people walk in a room, no matter who you with. When Tiger Woods walks in a room, no matter mm -hmm. what you think about him, the room gonna feel different. Yeah. It's just and so when I walk in a locker room, you know how locker rooms, offense on one side, defense is on another. That's just how the locker rooms are. But the defense all of a sudden starting to hang out on the offensive side. Cause a certain person is in cool, the room. You cool. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I don't need to try to one up you. I'm already up on you just because it's me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and, and so now you take an issue with me for no reason at all. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Cause you, you can't move like me. Mm. So you creating a fictitious negativity in your mind mm. to hate on me for no reason at all. So he was he, he was it ain't real. Ain't real. He was yeah, treating he was treating you like he was light skinned. Now you said welcome to I the club. Now you see. I got some my my best friend, one of my yeah. best friends, my lawyer, one of my lawyers, he likes no, me. I'm saying look, <laughs> we, we we get hated on a lot for no reason. That's what I'm saying. You guys get hated on for no like reason. It. Look at it. Yeah. He, he, he don't want to admit it. Yeah, he 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 he, he don't want to admit it. He yellow for sure. <laughs> <laughs> he got, no, my kids is like though. My kids, yeah. you know, they call me. They be they them, they, they they did that uh 23 and me and all that. They nothing. So I, I just won't do it. I don't care. But they all did it. And they got all this different stuff. So my daughter comes back with a trace of Nigerian in her, right? So they want to say I'm from Nigeria now. That's just my kids. <laughs> <laughs> they, they crazy though, you know, because I got mixed kids and they yeah. just crazy as yeah. all outdoors. Oh, that's but yeah, Sap don't eat you, man. I I bless him, man. I just I hope things work out for him. That's all I can mm. say. I can't. Mm. 
you know, that's about all. Hopefully coaching it, uh, did he run coaching, uh, I, I think he's supposed to, but I think they might have ran into a little bit of a snag. Okay. You know. Ho hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that worked out. Hopefully that Why worked out. Why y'all laughing? Hopefully that worked out. No, hopefully it worked out, but I think they ran into a little... I read something yesterday that there's there is a little bit of a snag possibly holding holding the whole thing up with Prime, but I think they'll get through it. Because I like... Look, man. I genuinely like him. He helped me win the Super Bowl. I tell I tell people all the time, man, it's one of the best fucking defensive tackles I've ever seen play. I watched him. But the motherfucker crazy. That's all. He's just like, there's no need to always have this 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 disdain for me. I ain't done nothing. I ain't sleep with your wife or nothing, man. What you what you mad at me for? Leave me alone. I didn't break up your family. Like leave me alone, but he just, you know. That's all I can say. I, can't, I don't know what else to say. You know, and then when we get into it, all the other Brooks and them, they texting me. They're like, man, leave that dude. I said, I ain't done nothing. Yeah, you ain't done nothing. What you mean? Leave, oh, I'll be the bigger man. Kid. I'm like, man, I, I just had enough of him. I had to get at him, though. Because I, you know, when you let shit go for a long time, you don't say nothing. You're just like, man, I ain't even. But it's been going on for so long, so long. Then he went to Jason Whitlock and that, and that whole thing. And I saw it. Somebody sent it to me. I said, man, what's wrong with dude? I said, I got it. Don't even trip. And I just had to just real quick. You know, real, just real quick, just nice and easy. He felt it. Yeah. Oh, he <laughs> felt, felt it. <laughs> Definitely felt it. Uh, you matched up with Dion early on. Early, early. Yeah. Was he was he still prime, or you was just like that at the time? Prime. No, I was like that, but he was prime. He still was prime. I caught a ball on him, and I spent to the outside, and I thought I was gone. Most people nine out of ten, I'm out. It's over. I Man, I looked up, and the dude. When I spent on him outside, I think I stiff, I kind of like pushed off on him and I hit the side, I hit the, the, the seam. I mean, that dude said, Choo. it was like the, Choo. you ain't mm. going nowhere, come here. Because he's so damn fast, you know, he just, and he big too, he's not small. People don't realize how big yeah. Prime is. Prime is, it was crazy. And then I played against him in Washington when he went to Washington. I saw him with the Cowboys and I saw him with Washington. Uh, I had just signed with Tampa Bay. Just signed. We played Washington the first preseason game. Was it him and Daryl Green still? Yeah, Daryl Green. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, he- uh, A little bit of speed over there. Yep. He grabbed, they threw a ball to me. Sean threw a ball, I climbed the ladder to go get it. And he snapped, and when he grabbed me, he pulled me down, twisted up my whole knee and everything. I thought I tore my ACL and everything, but I did. I just uh, twisted it up and I didn't play the rest of the game. But he was like, he was all panicked. I'm like, no, I'm good. But he prime was prime was legit. I mean, what you gonna say? Right. He was a coach. Daryl Green was good too. Yeah. Daryl Green was just too small for he me. He was fast though. Super fast. I had to block him one time. Well, I caught balls on him, but I had to block him. I felt so bad because he was smaller than yeah. me that I didn't even I respected him. Like I could have, like if it would have been any of these other Tell dudes, if it, with. oh man, I'd have ran him to the water buckets. Mm -hmm. yeah. But him, I didn't, I just kind of like. <sighs> Got I, ain't even, I ain't even gonna do you like this, you know. <laughs> you older, and I, I'm, I'm so not gonna was, do you like this. What was you about six four, two twenty in the league? Yeah, Whew. yeah. As a receiver, yeah, but I wasn't a fat two twenty. Mm -hmm. No, nah, right. You know, I was a ripped up, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. as they like to say, monkey man looking, yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. Didn't even look right. Yeah, ripped up mm. because you're working hard, you know. We ain't sitting up here drinking with y'all and doing all that. I'm, I didn't even really start drinking probably to the middle to the end of my career. I never used to drink. Go to the go to the clubs and hang out and stuff like that. Never would, never would drink. Let all the homies them drink or whatever, and then we'll figure it out later on. Mm -hmm. uh, you stepped in the league with your own shoe. What do you remember uh, vividly about the um, Adidas process? So this is crazy, man. This is this is this is a little crazy. Right? He told us we was gonna run um, through that bottle. That bottle gone. Yeah, I told you I was gonna finish it. The, the the crazy the crazy thing about it, so check this out. So in 1996, the shoe darling of the world was Sonny Vaccaro. Yes. Right? Yes. So I go to SC. We're Nike school. So what I do for the Rose Bowl national audience and everything is I cover my Nike shoes with these black sleeves that my equipment manager made for me because I knew that I was going to sign with Adidas right after the game. So I didn't give them... I'm the MVP, 220, whatever, Rose Bowl holder. They get nothing out of me. Nike. So, you know, they pissed. So, me and Sonny, whoop, we signed. Everybody said so we signed up Adidas. They do the deal, whatever. So, now, I think about a week later, 
we going to Portland. But guess who with me going to Portland? Kobe Bryant. So me and Kobe on the flight together on a private jet going up to Oregon. So you know how you always do something. And they Every time you do something, somebody got something for you to sign when you're doing it. It's like, oh, you know, just a couple of our sponsors we want you to sign. So it's like a stack of uh, pictures and stuff. It's probably like about 30 of them. He had to sign. His had to sign. Right. So I'm over there. You know, I'm like, high school. You know, I'm like, I'm... It's Kobe Bryant, though, right? Now that you think about it. But I'm like, eh, high school kid. Eh. Like, so now I'm over there signing. He's done. He look at me, go, what you doing, man? I said, I'm still signing my signature. He says, you sign? Let me see it. So I'm writing Keyshawn Johnson, number three. So that's all day, right? He go, man. He said to me, he said, there's only one Keyshawn, just like there's only one Kobe. And he goes, Kobe eight. That's how I changed my signature to just Keyshawn because of that moment. So we go up to Portland and we do the whole thing and, and they roll out the presentation and here's what we're going to do, signature shoe, and here's the clothes and here's the gear and all that, what you like. And so we meet with the team of people and they put everything together and then you just sign off on it. He the only one went that way to Nike. Because remember, like you said- Sunday, You mean to Adidas? To Adidas, I mean. Yeah. I mean, because Sonny McCarroll had him, yeah. Tim Thomas, and Jermaine on there. Yeah. All supposed to come out of high school that year. Yeah. 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 And so, it, that's how I learned to sign my signature. Because at first, it was all Keyshawn Johnson. Keyshawn Johnson. That's a lot. Yeah. So, man, it was all day. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, how the hell he finished so fast? But his was just Kobe 8. Hey. And then I was like- and he, was, he showed me. I was like, okay, cool. I'm changing mine up too. That's dope. No, it's crazy, right? <laughs> no, it's, 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 you know, I shot my first commercial with him ever. The whole thing. Shot my first commercial Talk with him. Talk to us about that. Huh? Talk to us about that commercial. Man, it was the it was the um, ESPN. It was an ESPN commercial. They called it uh, school. It was like school. So it was, it, was, it was Stu Scott, me, him, and Kenny Main, I think it was, I think that's who it was. And so we did it in Bristol. And they was teaching us basically media school, how to talk to the media. Cause we were supposed to come in and just be like, we were soft kids basically at the end of the day. And they wanted us to be out, you know, like, fuck that. They blew the call, you know, at a press conference. And we was just like, you know, sitting there, I'm like, it was a nice call, you know, and they wanted us to be more aggressive with it. It was cool though. It was a, it was a, it was a cool, it's probably one of the best commercials they ever made. You know, but it's crazy. It's just, it's crazy to, when you look back at it and you look at him and you look at me, man, we look like toothpicks. It was yeah, so skinny man, and just, yeah. oh. Young. Y'all was young. Young as That's hell. It was. it was young. It was so, it was, and, and, and uh, they came to play the Knicks his rookie year. And this was at a time in the NBA, y'all experienced because y'all played, where the teams would have two and three and four nights in that town to stay. Yeah. And he was like 18 years old. He wanted to go to the China Club with me. So I'm like, okay, we can go out. Man, dude came with a high school ID. <laughs> they wouldn't let him in. Yeah, they yeah. wasn't gonna let him in. You know, I'm like, come on, Cole. Damn. I was trying to work my magic, but they just was work. like, yeah, it ain't gonna happen. Well, no, ain't gonna happen. Liability. <laughs> he came with his high school ID. That's some lower marriage. That, shit, that, that huh? worked everywhere else, but not uh, here, Cole. Shit, not in New York. After uh, you left, go ahead. Go, you got go ahead. After you left the Jets, um, you signed with the Bucks, become the highest paid receiver in the league. Eight years, fifty-six million. How was that feeling? It was cool. It was. It was. To be honest with you, I really didn't trip on the money because I had already gotten money from my rookie deal and my but, shoe deal. But deals the highest paid receiver in the league, though. Yeah, but that lasted a fucking year. Moss yeah, came right, right behind. Right, yeah, me yeah. And, yeah, yeah. But no, it was cool. Yeah. That's what I'm saying to you about you gonna get that right. Yeah. Because that hate factored in there. You know, you the highest paid at your position. So typically, when you're the highest paid, that means you're the guy. Right. They're not paying you the most money unless you're the guy. Right. So when they traded for me, I probably could have got more out of them, but I got tired of negotiating. Mm. I could have, I probably, I bet you we could have got another five million out of them. But I told my agent, I told Jerome, I said, man, we done, man. I'm, uh, I'm happy. This is, you know, I don't need to set the set it so high because somebody gonna pass me anyway. You know, it was one of them negotiations where, you know, Parcells. When they first said they was gonna trade me, cause I because originally I wanted the Jets to redo my deal, but I had two years left on my contract. They wasn't gonna do it. So I just told my agent, I said, just tell me I'm gonna stay home, man. I'm I'm done. I ain't gonna play football no more. I'm just gonna go back to school and just finish up master's degree or whatever. And uh 
he delivered the message to him and told him, he said, he just ain't going to play football. He's good. You know, and then I came back. I said, you know what? I'm going to get my credit this season. I'm going to come in six games left in the year. I'm going to be 350 pounds. Y'all going to give me my credit this season. I'm going to hit free agency anyway. So y'all make the decision. So Bill, <laughs> Bill, like, I'm not coaching right now because he stepped down. Bill said, I'm going to trade you. So, okay, well, what's happening? He said, well, I got, I got Green Bay. Green Bay, man, I'm gonna, I go play with Farm. I'm like, I don't want to live in Green Bay. You know how much the ticket prices will be coming in and out of there for people to visit with me? I got to import, export, import. They go crazy in Green Bay. So I said, no, nah, I ain't doing it. So then it was Baltimore. They had the fourth pick. He said, you want to go to Baltimore? I said, no, nah, I don't want to go to Baltimore. No, no, no. They, not, they don't pass the ball. So he said, oh, here's what I'm going to do. I got two number ones in Tampa Bay. So I said, damn, they did just lose to the Rams. My man BK is down there, my teammate. You know what? Let me get on the phone. So I called BK. I'm like, BK. So I started asking him questions about the team and the city and stuff. He's like, yeah. So I went back to my agent, told him, say, yeah, I'll go to Tampa. So then we meet with the general manager out here in LA at Four Seasons. It's so crazy because Rich McKay was sitting with us at, at lunch. The owner of the Giants was in the corner, but he didn't know what we was there for. You know, he was like, damn, we walked in. He's like, damn, the Giants only here, Steve Tisch. But he didn't know what we was doing. And then, you know, um, it was negotiating. And so my agent said, hey, let's just fly to Orlando and go hang out with B. Shaw and them down in Orlando because he was repping B at the time. He said, let's go hang out with B in Orlando and I'll go and drive into Tampa and negotiate with them and let them know you're around the corner. They don't want you to get out of here. Because if you're that close and they smell you, they're going to want to taste you. Get it done. So get it done. So we did it. Got it done. I brought suit, you know, tie and shit. Phone ain't stopped ringing since. I mean, what, you know, you say, well, what was it like? It was like the lottery, I guess. I mean, I don't know the feeling because I ain't never won the lottery, but it, it it's like hitting the lottery. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and I went and bought me a rag. Bought my Bentley Azure. Bentley Azure. Yeah, because it was only at the time. It was a Notch Tees and Bentley Azores. I had the Azure. I had the white yeah. one with the tan interior. Uh, but what happened was Mike Tyson, John Horn, and Roy Holloway had, and Chris uh, Mills, they all had rag Azures. These were the only ones in LA, right? And they was all, you know, they had the rims on it, the whole thing. And 310 was popping then. Popping. So I. Uh, I said, man, they gave me a 14, well, I don't know, it was a 14, 15 million dollar check, whatever it was. I said, I'm giving me a damn Bentley. Cause that's how I am. I'm spontaneous when I want something. Cause I don't treat myself. I don't, I'm like a bum, as you can tell. I got a little sweats on, whatever. I never buy myself anything. I uh I said, man, I'm giving me a zoo. So I called, I called Mark from 310. I said, man, I need to give me a Bentley, dog. I said, you want to get Bentley? I said, yeah, give me a Bentley, give me a Porsche, and get me a Rag 63, and I'm good. And so then they got it for me. I drove that thing for in Tampa, man. I never used to drive it. When I sold it, it had like a thousand miles on it because I never used to drive it. I just felt like I wanted to treat myself. But that's how I was, you know. I just wanted to treat myself. Give me all three. I said, give me all three. What changed um, when Gruden showed up? Man, you know, John, it's interesting that you asked me that, Jack. So I went to the Tuck game. When they so we play Philly, they fired Dungy. After I get back to Tampa, I jump on a jet and go to to uh, New England because I'm friends with Belichick. Belichick coached me in 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 New York. Like that's like I'm good friends with him. So I go, I sit in Belichick's box, whatnot, and um, I wanted to see because it was the noise because Parcells was supposed to come. Bill was actually supposed to come to Tampa. But he decided not to at the 11th hour. So now the Gruden noise is starting to come. So I flew my ass to New England in the snow to watch. I just wanted to see what his, you know, peep him and check him out. So I checked him out. I said, okay, okay, I think I could, I could work with him. You know, I'm sitting up in the box. I'm just checking it out. I'm like, I got to get. So then when we hire him, I meet him, whatever. But I instantly peeped him. You see what I'm saying? Like I peeped him way before everybody else. And when you the first at doing something and you check somebody out, people tend to be like, 
yeah, the coach is right. The player ain't right. You're right because you, you're challenging authority in most people's eyes that don't understand the story. And I used to just, you know, check him out, the bullshit, you know, over and over. Oh, we're going to get you off. We're going to make sure you get these rocks. You're going to get the touches. Practice you like a dog till your tongue can't hang out your mouth for come game time. He either call him bullshit. Yeah. So now you like, <laughs> here. So then you got dudes on the team that's cool with him that he go to with me to talk to me because mm. he can't talk to me. He mm. got to go through them. So they telling me, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, he said he's going to get you off this week. Da, 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 da. So we play Minnesota. K-Mac is hurt. JoJo's hurt. Everybody hurt. I'm the long ranger out there. So now he got to feed me. So they fed me. They fed me, I don't know, a couple touchdowns, whatever. They fed me. So I'm sitting there. I'm saying to myself, you feed me because you have to. You could do this all the time if you wanted to. Only because you have to. So. He was always slick with his tongue, but I never would say anything. I just wouldn't even pay him no attention. So one day, y'all going to laugh at this. Y'all going to think I'm certified crazy. So I'm standing right here. Coach Mann is standing here. My man Reggie Barlow is standing here. So he walks over to me. You know how coaches do. They come over to you. They want to show you something. Uh, we should do it this way, that, blah, blah, blah. So he's trying to talk to me. I tell him, I say, man, do me a favor. Why don't you tell him? <laughs> what you want to tell me, and then he can tell me, because I don't want to talk to you. Anymore. And I walked away oh, from it. You flipped it on him, and everybody was like, <laughs> "I couldn't imagine. I, I would have died crazy. laughing." Right? I'm like, "Whatever, man." And so, why we really got into it, Jack, is we playing on a Monday night against the Rams, and this is the same year we won the Super Bowl. We won the Super Bowl this year. Yeah. He calls a play. He'll say he called it a certain way. I heard it a certain way. So I line up the way I heard it. So now we call a timeout. We go to the sideline, and I'm having a conversation with my coach and him, and we're all there, and he's saying, well, I called this. I'm like, that's not what you called. Everybody lined up at what you called. This is what you called. So now it was a run and play any fucking way. It wasn't, he wasn't throwing the ball. So now he takes me out of you personnel and he puts K-Mac in, which I don't care. K-Mac's like one of my best friends. I don't care. K-Mac goes in the game. But what that does is signal to people, I fucked up. Mm -hmm. When you, the motherfucker that fucked up. Yeah, yeah. But you're going to make people think I'm the one that fucked up. Oh, you don't know the offense. I don't know the offense. Yeah. Type cap. Yeah. that's, That's some cap. Yeah. So now I'm like, so I'll get ready to walk away. And while he's doing this, we're having a heated conversation amongst all of us. So I get ready to walk away and he mumbles something like motherfucker or something something very, you know, disrespectful. disrespectful. So I turn around, Jack. I turn and went right at him and told him, I'll beat your motherfucking ass right here on Monday Night Football for the world to see. You got me (laughs) fucked up. And so now I walk away. He say something else. So at this point, I go back at him now. And, and tell him, put my finger in his face and say, you say another motherfucking word is going down. And at that point, it was like, oh my God. This we motherfucking ain't, ain't going to give him a third one. No, I gave him a third one in the locker room after the game. I told him, you know, our coaches going, they little coaches offices in the stadium. Oh, I made all assistant coaches get out. I said, man, y'all get out of here. I'm going to talk to him. No, you, you can really listen to me right now because that's some bullshit you did. Then me and him, we ain't never, like, that was it. And I played the rest of the season. We went on, won the Super Bowl. I came back the next year. And the next year, so my ex-wife is from the Bay Area. So we play Frisco the next year in San Francisco. My kids, now mind you, my kids are living in the Bay Area. My two oldest kids are living in the Bay Area with their mother. Parent-teacher conference is coming up on Monday. We play on Sunday. So the first thing I tell him before the game, way before the game, during the week, I say, man, I'm going to stay in the Bay Area after San Francisco because I got teacher parents. I'm not going to Florida coming all the way back to the Bay. I'm not doing that shit. So we lose to San Francisco. So now they looking for me at the airport. They like, what the fuck here? I hadn't already told him what I'm doing. But he made it seem like he never got that information. Like I just parlayed on him and rolled out. He he go tell the people that knowing that ain't my behavior, that's not who I am. Not here, cancel. 
So now I'm a problem. You see what I'm saying? And so I stay home with my kids for the teacher parents thing. I go back to California. I mean, I go back to Florida. They deactivate me for the rest of the year. I'm like, cool. Mm. I ain't tripping. You're going to have to pay me because I ain't done nothing wrong. So you're going to have to pay me anyway. You're going to have to pay me anyway. So that was, and then the motherfucker had nerve enough to come back and try to get me after I whooped his ass when I was in Carolina and went off on him. I went nuts on him in Carolina game. Then they tried to come back and get me the, the year I retired. They wanted to re-sign me, him and Bruce Allen. It's public knowledge. Everybody knows because the story was out there. They reached out to me to sign me because guess again, I don't have no problem with nobody. I'm good. If, if I, you know, if you'd have made the money right, I wouldn't play for you. I ain't got no problem. Right. I ain't got no problem at all. None. 2003. Man, watch out, man. <laughs> we win this. I won this championship with the uh, Spurs. You won the t uh, NFL Super Bowl with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Do you remember the ESPY Awards and the playoff and the Playboy yeah. match? Yeah. Yeah, SP Awards. Yeah, of course. What's up? What you what, what you remember about that? <laughs> Which part? The Playboy Mansion. Because remember, they had, they had the boxing that night at the Playboy oh, Mansion. Oh, I was at the Playboy. I specifically remember uh, we're having a conversation with what's the name? Uh, my man that was in the back room with OJ. Uh, Kato K. I Kato remember K. that specifically. He was there. He yeah. was definitely there. Yeah, I, I remember that yes. specifically. Because I asked him, I said, man, did he do it? Did he do it? <laughs> He said he don't he play do. no bullshit. I'm going to ask there. you the question. No, I asked him. Right. I literally, you know, and he gave me the, he thinks so. He gave me the, I think so. We was, we was in the backyard of the Playboy match. Yeah. This is the this was when the first, the world got a chance to first time see Jeff left, left Hook Lacey. He boxed in the in the backyard. It was Friday night fights at ESPN, but it was SB, it was SB weekend. Uh -huh. And everybody, well, tomorrow, everybody was there. Cherokee Parks is the, is the GOAT. If you don't know Cherokee Parks, if you ever party with him, he basically he was tatted. He was tatted he more ran, than you. He basically ran the Playboy Mansion. Yeah, he was tatted more than you, Matt. Oh, he is, yeah. We had a great time. That was two thousand three. I seen him in my jersey. Yeah. But uh, that team, how special was that team? Was our Bucks team? Yes. Well, it's special. It's probably one of the, the 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 best teams in the history of the NFL. I would say that. I mean, too. we probably got. I think we got five Hall of Famers off the team, and possibly another two coming. Yeah. Yeah, we got, I think it's five Hall of Famers with another two. So we got about seven Hall of Famers. And then arguably, you could argue, if you want to, a couple more that could potentially be in the running. D. Brooks, you, Sap. No, no, you got Sap. D. Brooks, Brooks they make it? No, no, oh, Sap, yeah. Brooks, yep. Rondé, John Lynch, Simeon Rice, should be. He yep. will be coming soon. Uh, McFarlane? Randall McDaniel. No. Nope. Uh, so that's six. That's six. Am I missing somebody? Yeah, six. Yeah. Six dudes off the team. Yeah. I ain't gonna make it because I didn't play long enough. If I would have played 15 years or something like that, I'd be, but I didn't play long enough. Yeah. yeah. Which I like I said before, I didn't play to get into the hall. I played to get checks. Yeah. You know, to help my mom and my sisters and brothers out. Fuck about no damn Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah. You did. It's your cool, it's respect for them, but everybody it don't, don't everybody, do nothing for me. You got respect from everybody in the hall, though. A hundred percent. Yeah. Later on, you re you reunited with Bill Parcells with the Cowboys. Uh, Y'all relationship at the beginning of the present day, what made him different than every, all other coaches that you played for? You know, when it was so, when I first got Bill, because in 96, when I got drafted, they drafted Terry Glenn. I think he was seventh. I think he was the seventh pick of the receiver, a different type of receiver than me. But when I got Bill, everybody, because I wrote my book, Just Give Me the Damn Ball, my rookie year. Mm -hmm. So everybody in New York was telling him to run me out of town. You know? Crazy, right? <laughs> Give me the damn ball. This and is so, <laughs> And so everybody was telling Bill to get rid of me, trade me, get rid of me. I'm a problem. This, that, now you know how that goes. Yeah, you don't even know what you're talking about. So when I sit down with him, he he goes to me. He goes, "How much did you play at this year?" I said, "I was about shit. I don't know, two twenty five or something." He says, "Yeah, you you look two twenty five. Look like you got the fucking mumps." I'm like, man, please, man. All right, whatever. He says, "What about that guy?" That was at USC. What did you play then? I said, I was probably 208, 210. He goes, that's the dude I want. So what I did is I came back to training camp at 205. So I came back at 205. Him and our relationship from that point on, I couldn't do no wrong. I couldn't do, I could have... If they came to my house and found bodies in the basement, they were like, hey, they planted them. Hide that's, them. They, they, he didn't do that. 
But that's how our relationship, because I did everything he asked me to do. When he said, do this, it got done. When he gave me an assignment to go dig that dude out, no problem. So our relationship was always, I became a Parcells guy. And at that point, when the big tuna speak, everybody listen. He the grand poop, all right? He's the big enchilada. When he say, it's like Pat Riley. When Pat say, he good, he good. And that's how Bill, you know, because everybody was trying to act as though West Coast kid, da, da, da. He was like, no, that's my guy. So something obviously went wrong with him in Tampa with that dude. Man, come get, I need to get this dude back on my team so I can set a standard on how we win. So when they, when the Cowboys let me go and they brought in T.O., you know, Bill left for like a, two months. He left. He left because they took the authority away from him. He didn't want T.O. He was like, man, I don't need that. But Jerry made the decision to go get T.O. and let me go to Carolina and Bill disappeared on him for like two months. They didn't even have a coach. Many people don't know that he disappeared on him, wouldn't return their calls or nothing. He was mad as hell because that's not what he wanted. Then he coached that year and he left. Remember he retired, he was like, I'm done. I don't want to coach up here no more. And that's Jerry getting in the way. Fast forward, present time. Is Jerry still in the way? What's wrong with the Cowboys right now? I think they're missing something, man. They're missing something. What is it, though? Leadership. Leadership? Yeah, I think they're missing and, something. I think they're missing something. In the some locker leadership. room or management? Yeah. No, leadership in the locker room. Jerry does a tremendous job in terms of management. He doesn't get, see, people think that Jerry is calling plays. He ain't in the way like that. He does a tremendous job with Will Clay and Steven on assembling players and stuff. But when you, you done been on championship teams, you done been on teams before, when you don't have somebody like a Michael Irvin, that can grab a dude. I'm like, what the fuck you doing? You gonna have those issues? There's nobody that when it's 27 nothing is going ham on somebody. They just nobody. Like if I was in that locker room, it's 27 nothing. Man, I'd be cussing Michael Parsons' ass out so bad. Yeah. They had to get rid. They had to separate us because it's your job to stop them. It's my job to score. Okay, they got 27. Part of that 27 is because of you. I don't care if they double you, trip, you got to find a way. And I don't think they have that like they had in the past. They had Michael and Emmett and Big E and all them dudes, you know, that Charles Haley and them. They wasn't having it back then, but they missing that now. Been missing you got to have leadership on teams. Championship teams all got leadership. Yep. Everybody that's ever won the championship, Thanks. you could point to that dude that's a leader on your team. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it ain't even a superstar. And sometimes it ain't even a superstar. When we won in Tampa... Derrick Brooks was essentially our leader. You know what I'm saying? But I held mine on the offensive side, but he held everybody accountable. Mm -hmm. and he would come up to me, and Brooks, though, he's not a cusser or nothing. He'd come up to me and just say, 19, the fuck are they doing? he just simply tell me that, man, mm -hmm. you got to go tell them people to get you the ball. Yeah. It, okay, cool. I'm, I'm all ears. Yeah, right. I'm ready. <laughs> right. 11 seasons, three Pro Bowl, Super Bowl champ. Uh, you walked away. Before you, you know your body didn't give up or nothing. Where, where were you at? Was it just mental? You retired? You were done? Yeah, I or was. I was, it... I was I, I had mentally checked out. You know, I just and had... no coming back from that neither. Nah, As a professional you know, athlete, you know what? No, see, because I I accomplished so much so early, though, Matt. You got to think. My goal was only to play ten years. My goal was never to play eleven. I did that extra year as a favor for my offensive coordinator that was in Carolina that would coach me in a. Uh, at the Jets, he was my offensive coordinator with the Jets, and he went to Carolina. I did him a favor because Carolina had just lost to Seattle in the NFC Championship game. In in Smitty, Steve Smith, mm. they had him bottled up. He was the Lone Ranger out there. So I'm like, hey. I said, man, I gotta, you know, Smitty, like, man, come help me. I'm like, okay, cool, I'll go over there. You know, you don't pay me, I'm coming. I'll do this for a little bit. But then when I didn't, we didn't win there. I'm like, man, I don't want to do this. And ESPN came calling, so when I started calculating the economics. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't mathing. Yeah, I'm doing the math. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting there. I'm like, well, if I play, I'm going to make this, but I ain't got to get hit. I do this. I'm going to make that. And this second career, I could start now. I don't already accomplish. Think about it, man. I went to Pro Bowls. Okay, so what? How many fucking All-Star games I need to go to? Mm -hmm. Right? What a championship. I done put, I done set records and done different things. So it's like, do I want to still beat my body up? No, I don't want to do that no more. No, I'm good. So that was my decision. I woke up and called Jerome, my agent. I called Jerome and said, Jerome, I'm retired, man. I'm done. Are you crazy? Out the blue. 
out the blue. Because what happened when I left Carolina, Jeff Fisher, Seattle, all of them was trying to get me. So I went and visited, right? And I went and visited Tennessee because I still was kind of like, I was 33, I think I was. So I was like, man, do I want to play football? So I go to Tennessee. Jeff, I've been knowing Jeff for a long time. He wanted me, yada, yada, yada. So I'm like, new Norm Child from SC, new the receiver coach. He recruited me in college. So I'm like, I'm going to go to Tennessee. I think I'm, I knew Mike Hong was Seattle. I'm like, I, mean, I think I'm going to. So then I like decided I can't fuck with Vince Young. I ain't playing football. I ain't, I've been too many quarterbacks. Oh, Lindell, man, y'all. I ain't doing y'all eating burritos and shit, y'all. Now I'm the old dude. Mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with this young stuff. <laughs> so I'm like, no. So I get home. I go to sleep. I wake up at probably like 6 a.m. I call my agent. I said, man, I think I'm retired. And that's when he's like, what's that? what are you talking about? I said, man, I'm done. I don't want to play football no more. Told my family. I said, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to chill. Know. And ESPN was already... Already in my back pocket anyway because I had, I was doing the draft. I had already done the draft a couple of years, and we was already working on a deal for me to do Monday Night Countdown. Even though I was still playing, we was working on a deal. And then when I retired, that's when they came full board and was like, "He with us the whole way. Here we go." So the chips obviously got stacked even mm -hmm. higher. What was that transition like? I mean, obviously it's the wave now for athletes to transition. And although you weren't the first. You you know you were there early. It was it was you know you've been in the space eighteen years. What was it like that first transitioning over to a, a machine like ESPN? Man, you know so because I had did the draft and I had done some stuff early you had your in my feet career, wet a little bit. so I got my feet wet. Mm -hmm. But the, the 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 grace of God put me in a position to work alongside Tom Jackson and Chris Berman. Legend. So that's just like all of a sudden Going with they Jack, stick Jack you and with they, Kenny they and stick, Charles. Yeah, yeah, they stick right you with the Kenny rip. and Charles right out the rip, or they mm -hmm. stick you with Chick Hearns or some mm -hmm. shit right out the rip. Mm -hmm. That's what it was like. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I remember one time though, uh, you know, when I first was dealing with the cameras and trying to understand the cameras and the production and all that, I'm there talking and I'm, you know, I'm going on and on and on. And all of a sudden I got these ear, these, these uh voices in my ear. So I stopped. National TV and, Monday night and listen to what they say. I done stopped cold for like a minute. It felt like Tom Jackson. Tom, like, man, what are you doing? I said, man, they talking to me, but they wasn't talking to me. They had opened up my <laughs> mic on my earphones, <laughs> my ear set by mistake. The director was telling somebody else to go to this camera, and I, I was like, <laughs> Tom, like, what's wrong? I said, man, they talking to me. I mean, they ain't talking to you, fool. They talking to me. <laughs> Every since then, I never made that mistake again. But when you have right. guys Some like OGs, that, yeah. yeah, you you just learn, man. Mm -hmm. But it was cool. It was it was a smooth transition, and hell, I was there seventeen years. Mm. What's the next five to ten look like for you? What's some goals? I mean, obviously, man, I'm gonna keep stealing. I'm gonna keep stealing money from Fox. As long as, <laughs> as, long as they as long as they keep paying me, I'm gonna keep stealing. That's what I'm looking at. I'm I'm looking at. Stand there and just continue to keep building. And, you know, obviously, I love doing it. I love waking up in the morning. I love going in. I love talking sports. You know, uh, if you want to call it debating, I don't call it debating. I call it communicating. Just, you know, because I ain't got time to be doing all arguing and screaming. And if your point is your point, that's your opinion. It is what it is. Mine is mine. And we could. It ain't personal. No, it ain't not, never going to be personal. Why would I? Why would I make mm -hmm. it? Per Anybody that make it personal is a damn fool. Because mm -hmm. as I said to y'all at the beginning, I'm not fucking my money off. Mm -hmm. You know how hard it is to get money. Why would I do that? Right. Making something personal? No, nah, man. Uh, uh. Because these seats they don't come up too often. Mm -hmm. And I understand everybody got platforms now, and it's a little different. But them big boy seats, they do not. Mm -hmm. Them dudes. Man, them dudes, you see, they be rolling dudes out in wheelchairs. Thirty years. <laughs> yeah, how long have you been here? Oh, 60 years. It's like really. I mean, like, you know, and they still good at it, mm -hmm. but them seats don't come up every other year. No, not at, no, all. Not at all. all. Fatherhood. Unfortunately, lost a child. Uh, condolences again. Uh, probably the worst thing ever gone through. But what is fatherhood for you and what does it mean to you? Man, it it, it is extremely stressful, as you know, having kids of your own. Um, is it's, it's it's just one of those things. My little babies obviously is just beautiful and fun, and I love dealing with them and having fun. But it's stressful because, like you said, losing my daughter, it it obviously it sheds a different light 
on the responsibility of fatherhood. Mm-hmm. It's just it's, it's just different. You know, even my son now who's older who works with me, you know, nepotism, I got to have him with me. I, I use that word a lot and let them know they do it, I can do it too. Because mm-hmm. he's good at it. He's actually good at his job where some people, kids aren't good at their job, but they he's still got jobs. Tool, right. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's that stress. You know, he's older. You know, he likes to smoke his weed, whatever. He's grown. He adult. Ain't nothing wrong with Ain't that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. He Ain't adult. He that. smoke his weed, whatever. I got something but, for him after but, the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he got a lot already. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it's one of those deals from a stress standpoint because you're always thinking. Yeah. Where is he at? What Come he's on, doing? Man. Text him. Hey, you take two, 30 minutes to respond back. Yeah. What you doing? <laughs> why Why you ain't respond back? Right. You know? And then having to watch my daughter, who is 14 years old, continue to grow. You know, she's beautiful and just growing. And, you know, it's going to have to, I'm going to have to probably figure out how to, I told her she wants to go to New York to go to school. I told her, you, you do understand you're going to have security and chaperones when you go to school. <laughs> That's just what it's going to be. They're going to be right there with you. Oh, you're weird. You're this, you're that. Because they don't, you know, don't I'm it. weird. You know, I'm weird to them, but it's it's good, man. It's a healthy, you got a good, healthy relationship. Um, yeah, I I just like watching them grow. That's dope. They go you by know? fast, too. They think I'm lame, though, because especially my young ones, my young ones think I'm lame because <laughs> they see they see everything that I used to do with my older ones, like all the fancy cars and all the different stuff. And the motherfuckers made me go buy a Porsche now. I don't went and bought a 911 because my youngest son, 11 years old, he think I'm weak because I drive a Prius and a Tesla 3. <laughs> he tell me my, my Tesla 3 is a starter Tesla. You had to go get the Cayenne on it? No, I went and got 911 Carrera. Mm. Oh, the Carrera, yeah, yeah 911. I had to, I had to, Top down. Go. Yeah, yeah, oh, wait, for sure. You see the weather, Jack. Yeah, that's what I tell you. Yeah. But, but the crazy thing is he applied that pressure. Yeah. Because- he he said, man, it ain't nothing like kid pressure. Matt Barnes, he got the so and so mm-hmm. got the what, what did you, I come, you know. So I bought it, I got it like on Thursday, and I picked him up from school on Friday. So I knew I had to pick him up. This joker that text me talking about, can I bring my new car? I'm like, this come on, he's trying to show it off quick. Man, playing. that's what that, but that's quick what it is. And it's right. funny. It's yeah. fun, man. It's is you know, it's that's a, how y'all bond. Yeah, it's a fun, yeah. a fun experience for him. You know, he 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 likes all that sort of stuff and he's in the cars and shoes. The shoe game is probably better than any of ours. I am. Mm-hmm. He got a cold shoe game. Yeah. He, he got a cold was, shoe game. Yeah, his daddy got money. I never grow out of that shit. I never grow out of it. The shoes? Clothes, looking nice shoes, a fashion. I never grow out of it. Jewelry, none of that. I never grow out of it. See, I ain't, I ain't. But we different in California. Yeah, He'd be the I, one all the time, always real. I only wore this shit because we was I was being Cheech and Chong earlier, so I had my whole little outfit. But I California, we just yeah, I'm I wore shorts, flip shops, and t-shirts. Yeah, man. man, all the time. They think I that shit look, on and, look, and can go hey, anywhere Jack, with it. Jack, they think I they think I'm out there surfing the way I look. You know what I call it? <laughs> non threatening. Toes out. Toes off. Non threatening. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm toes out, non threatening. When mm-hmm. they see me, they're gonna go, Hey, you doing there, He's sir? Safe, they ain't gonna be like He's safe. No, uh-uh. Yeah. No, because that's how I dress. I'm t-shirts, flip-flops, it's board shorts. It's that California easy. shit. Easy. Sweats, you know. You, All the this time. This is some James Pierce. It ain't, you know. Mm-hmm. That'll run you. It look regular. No, it gonna run but you. But when you swipe the card, it's going to hit you. 1500 yeah. <laughs> got to have a, 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 one of them new heavy credit cards to get that. Yeah, <laughs> one you got to have a make thick sales. one. sales, yeah. But that's, you know, but that's how it is. That's right. how you, that's but I love California my kids, lifestyle. though, man. I love it. I love if it, I, right. you know, I'm fixed up, so I'm good. But if I could, I would. I'm yeah, about doing, I got yeah, six. No I'm thinking about doing one more. No, I ain't. You better than me. You better than me. <laughs> yeah, we thinking about oh, it. Man, kids is expensive. Oh, they are very. Man, kids are expensive. very expensive. Especially my three year old. She keeps growing. Oh, no, no. So every time I well, look so you got, up, you got baby babies too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got no, the three. No, what's the young one's rap. ages? The the young one, 14, 11, and three. Yeah. No, no, no. Every time I look up. It's a damn box at the front door mm-hmm. because she needs something because she keeps growing. Constantly. She keeps growing. She keeps growing. Constantly. Man, we're going to knock this, we're gonna knock this finish, down, Let's finish man. it off. Uh, yeah, someone who, you know, very outspoken over your life, over your career, but you've silently been helping rebuild South LA. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, originally, um, like when I was playing, I got involved in redevelopment and stuff like that. And... Um, you know, we, we, uh, so my first project was on Slauson and Western. Um, we brought in like what Home year? Depot. Ah, oh, man, what year was that? That was two, 99? Oh, damn. 
99. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 99. We started, I think we started like in 98, 99. And so we brought in the first Home Depot in east of the Mississippi. Damn. I'm sorry, west of the Mississippi. Okay. In an urban area. Everything else was all in the suburbs, mm-hmm. the whole deal. So we brought it in the hood. Starbucks, Magic. Magic, when he owned the Starbucks, we brought him in. I was his landlord for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, That's dope. Talk that shit. Oh, yeah. Well, he, he, he'll let you know all day. Yeah. I was his landlord. Um, and so we just started bringing in all the different different stores and stuff like that. And it was just like it needed it because South, so during the riots, nothing was rebuilt at all in South LA. Nothing. It was just like burnt down buildings and it was just, it was crazy looking. And so we just made a commitment to purchase the land and, and rebuild starting there. And then we just started building other projects all over the city, you know? Dope. But but it but it also it ain't just about making the money. It's also on, being able to create a job. It was cre- it was creating jobs, opportunities. opportunities yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because yeah. it wasn't like you was gonna put a million in and make fifty million. It was. It's not like that. You know, people think that things are like that. You know, there's numbers. You got to pay for stuff, man. It's like a mortgage, right? You got debt. You know, it's a debt servicing business, and we just built it. And it felt good to be able to do that and say, I reached back down to my community and gave them something that they never thought they would have. Man, quick hitters. We almost done. First thing to come to mind, your top five current young receivers in the game. Top five? Or three. See, these Negroes be getting mad when you do this. But, <laughs> or, or you can give me all time then if you don't want to go no, current. No, I'll okay. go current. Okay. Tyreek Hill, uh, Devontae Adams. Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, uh, AJ Brown. That's pretty. That's probably unless I'm missing somebody. But see, I like T. Higgins, but he that's tough. me. He tough. That's that, that's me. Some people don't like that. He I like tough. Tyler Lockett. Some people don't like Tyler. They mm-hmm. look ah, Tyler Lockett, cool mm-hmm. man. He solid as hell, solid. Mm-hmm. But they looking for somebody to catch for eighteen hundred and all that. I'm like, no, man. Tyler Lockett gonna give you that stuff. He gonna give you that work. Yeah. Just, just ain't gonna say my boy name, Who's your boy? Oh, C.D. Lamb. Yeah, C.D. I told you I was gonna see somebody gonna get mad. He always gets this. <laughs> C.D. Lamb. <laughs> see, you you should get on Richard. Richard's the one calling him a fringe. No, boy. I ain't never uh, yeah, said that. I, no, no, I saw him. I, I saw him. I said he cool. I saw what he said. I said, man, this man had a hell of a year this year. How can you hate on him? That team sucked, but he had a hell of a year. C.D. Lamb. Yeah, yeah. C.D. Lamb, legit. You know, I. I I wanted to see more out of him this year. They gave me more after the first four or five games. Yeah. He wasn't doing much. Yeah. Then they start moving him around and putting him in position to make plays. Mm-hmm. Because before, he just was a guy. Average, yeah. Yeah, but then they start mm-hmm. moving him around, and he developed into something different. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you got those type of dudes. Then you got mm-hmm. the older heads, of DeAndre Hopkins. If my nephew could ever stay healthy, you got Cooper Cup, yeah. Puka Good. Who's your nephew? Michael Thomas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He the truth. Yeah. Monster. Yeah. They get, they, you know, you got to stay healthy, though. Yeah. That's his deal. His health health is his issue. Yeah. Getting his ass up out of New Orleans now, mm-hmm. hopefully. Mm-hmm. Well, he ain't got it. You know, that's my brother's son. I didn't know that. Yeah, brother's son. Mm-hmm. He's crazy. Mm-hmm. He's crazy, look too. Look who his uncle is. What you mean? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that probably has something to do <laughs> yeah, with it. look who his uncle is. Yeah. I'm going far, far from the Yeah, that probably yeah. got something to do yeah. with it, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. Who was your first celebrity crush? Hey, this should be interesting. Oh, stop LA. Watch out, man. L- yeah, come on, finish it. <laughs> Who's your first celebrity yeah. crush? <laughs> yeah. LA, back in the too. day, back first in the day, celebrity yeah. Celebrity crush? He was in LA when it was popping in the nineties. He was in USC. See, I ain't really no, I ain't really no tell all guy though. Dude, who you got a crush? You, you, we ain't gotta ask if you did nothing with her. I just, who was your I'm crush? Saying, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, but something I'm that saying came to your mind like your early crush. on, like. Damn, you basically impressive. tell it. You basically tell it. I can't talk about nobody because I didn't got them all. Basically, just tell somebody <laughs> that you dreamed about that you never had. As a, especially when you was in college, you know, you coming up, you know, you finna go to the I league. Do, I'm but saying, see, I wasn't even. But see, in college, I wasn't really tripping like that on the celebrity tip because they was all around you already. In real no, life. in L.A. That's what I mean. The, 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 you don't need no celebrity girl in L.A. They, the, the girls in L.A. Everybody look better than look better than the yeah. celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. I can put. There wasn't no singer or nothing early on. He I'm was like, let me think, man, because I'm sure. I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> I'm sure. It, it, I'm sure, too. I don't care if you oh, know. Oh, no. You want to know freeze moment? Freeze moment. So. Thank you. No, nah, I got you. I got you. So freeze this is moment. freeze moment. Like freeze that. up. Write that down. So if you know Sunset, 
I'm going west on Sunset through Beverly Hills, like UCLA, mm -hmm. going west on Sunset. Mm -hmm. Before you get to Doheny, on the right hand side, there's a, a, a FedEx. A, it's a FedEx, a small little FedEx spot. So I'm with the homies. I'm in my big old black truck. I just bought a big old black. I don't remember. What, it's like a, a expedition, blacked all the way out. This is this is uh, ninety the late nineties. Had to be no. It was mid mid. It was ninety seven. Mm -hmm. Ninety ninety seven. Ninety seven. Mm -hmm. I'm going out sunset. So the home. You know. You know. How you got your home. They gonna gash you. Woo! Yeah. And and I was. I got to the signal light, and the FedEx was there. And I saw this light-skinned chick. She had a sundress on. Mm, mm, mm. Paint and the I picture. Said, Damn, she fine as a motherfucker. Mm, sundress. They like, man, you a sucker. You man, you need to go get her. You need to go get her. I'm like, man, I'm I'm trying to drive. They gassed me. I bust a roll on yeah. Doheny. It worked. Turn back around on Sunset. I pop out the car. <laughs> Wait though, I should check this out though. Freeze moment though. So now, I go into the FedEx, I open up, put my hazards on park right, I open up the FedEx, I open it up, and she's standing right there, it's Holly Berry. <sighs> I swear to God, man, I, I swear to God, I ain't lying, man, God be my witness for blind of diet. Man, I got spooked. You get froze up. I froze up. Didn't even. I just kept. I just faked like I wanted something. You shut the and door and walked away. Basically, <laughs> basically. <laughs> no, basically because I would have froze up too. No, but now this is. I know this is this is him after David Justice. Yeah. So this is the the peak. Oh yeah, she cracking like man. I'm sitting there. I'm looking at her and I'm talking. I swear to God, man. When you talk about beauty and flawless at this point, nothing. It was just. In that sundress? Oh, man, oh, Lord, have mercy. I know you lost. I would have lost mm. it. And, you know, I'm young. I ain't really, you know, I'm peeping. I'm like, like, damn. I ain't ready for this. this. Mm -hmm. I can't. Yeah, I ain't ready I ain't for it. I ain't going to be able to hold this. this. Yeah. But that's, you know, that was one that. Yeah, I like that. You know, I, that was one. You was ready to lose yourself. I would have been ready to lose myself. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I froze up. I yeah. completely froze up immediately when I opened up the door. What I they, didn't know what to say. What they say when you got back in the car? I think they was just like, man, what you doing? I said, man, uh, come on, man, I can't. <laughs> she ain't on that. No, yeah, 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 right. Like, no, nah, man, she ain't. I think I might have said she ain't fucking with me, something like that. Like, oh, oh she ain't fucking with me anyway. Oh, no, nah, but the celebrity, the celebrity crushes. You know, I, my lifestyle. You know. <sighs> yeah, I feel you. I've been here for a long time too. Yeah, I look, hear you. look, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's just, yeah. Hey, man, it's just you two yeah. niggas. Yeah, yeah. Wait, so, yeah, man, if I was a kiss and tell dude, Oof. yeah, oh, no, nah, don't ever do that. Man, I ain't gonna never be that dude. But if I was Jack, <laughs> I'd just be laughing at cats like me and stuff. Yeah, y'all even understand, man. Y'all, yeah. y'all don't know. Yeah, Jack is my witness to that too. That young Slim Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that dude with yeah. that earring in his ear and that fade. <laughs> Come on, man. You, you always you know, that boy <laughs> kept a fresh line though. Man, that fade that and fade. that young earring. Yeah. Oh man, the gift of gab. Yeah. Oh please. The gift of gab. Like, man, was, ah. The gift of gab take it a long <laughs> way, baby. Man, come on, man. Yeah. Oh, Jack. Yeah. Oh, you man, know I, I know. Even, I don't even want to. I don't even want to tease him like that. Because, because you, you know, know I know they everybody be getting out talking about what the. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. I ain't no need to do that. But if I did, man, it would be like, there's no way. The homies know. Yeah, but the, the, the real, right. yeah, people, yeah, mm -hmm. of course. But people just be like, there's no way. Mm -hmm. it, it, that's a lie. Mm -hmm. No, I ain't gonna lie on my dick. That's mm -mm. for damn sure. That mm -mm. couldn't have been true. Yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know. Let you tell it. That's how, that's how you know, when you're a single man and you're an athlete and you're just living your life. In LA. In LA, in New York, part. in LA, yeah. you go, it's oh, a lot of you crossover. Gotta be, you got New York too. Yeah. I oh, love I had it. New York. I you love know, it. Yeah. Said, once upon a time, uh oh. My first four years, no, first four years, it was. Jeter, myself, Stray, we was probably the three in Patrick Ewing, probably the four big sports Names. dudes mm -hmm. in the city, in the town. Come on, man. New York is tough. In the prime time, too. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Y'all gonna give me a trouble. Give me over here reminiscing. <laughs> I'm reminiscing my dance. <laughs> uh, favorite route. Favorite route? Your favorite route. Yeah, that you're gonna work on me. Work with me on before I go to Colorado in a couple weeks. <laughs> My favorite route that they just 
could not defend. Probably slant. Slant. Quick it's slant. Just not, yeah. Just, not, just quick slant. Uh-huh. Three step drop. Uh-huh. Six yards. Bam! It's there. Six. I'm gonna pick up twelve every time I touch it. Cause you, cause you six four two. Yeah, I'm gonna lean in the forward, mm-hmm. and, and then if you miss, you, you I'm gone. My, my slant, bro. See, I'll, I'll show. Me, I'll show. Yeah, and, 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 and that, I, would, I would say <laughs> the slant, and then when we get into the red zone, fade in the red zone, post in the red zone. <laughs> nothing you could do. Nothing. Too big. Yeah, it was. It was. And people, so just like in the in basketball, there's something that coaches always said you couldn't do, which was a lie. Was just a lie, right? Is well, Matt, if you if you go if you push him to his left, he can't go to his. That's a lie. I decide I'm not going to my left. I'm gonna go to my right all the time because it's easier for me. Mm-hmm. That was the mistake that coaches made with me. Well, he's not a burner. Okay, well, I'm not a burner. You don't become the number one overall pick if you cannot run in a skill position. But that becomes a narrative. And what happens is they coach you bad as a defender to make you believe such a thing. I'm going to cook you. Get your ass burnt. Get your ass fried. (laughs) Because that's what would happen. They come up and try to challenge me and they miss. I ain't Tyreek Hill. But once you miss, you you a a dead duck. Mm -hmm. I'm going to shoot you completely down. Long stride. Yeah. So that happens. Oh, push Stevie Jack to his right. He can't go right. It's like, well, no, that's not true, man. That's just with y'all selling to your dudes. It's be a long Meanwhile, night. I'm going to give it to you. It's going to be a long night, baby. One song to play over your career highlights. Ooh. What would that be? All's Eye on Me. All Eyes on Me. Too hot. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Mm. All yeah. Eyes on Me. One quarterback during your time you wish you could have played with? with and during my time or just in general? In general. Probably Brady, I would guess. Mm. Montana Brady, mm-hmm. Montana. Mm-hmm. The reason I would play with because I play all different positions. Mm-hmm. So mostly Brady's targets is the tight end and the slot. In the slot, dude. But mm-hmm. I played in the slot. I played mm-hmm. outside. I played inside. So I can eat anywhere with mm-hmm. him. You know what I'm saying? And having a dude like that, if I could have played with him, oh, we wouldn't even. Sh- it would have been over. We'd have won we, so many we fucking might, Super Bowls. We might have not have got this interview. Shit. Nah, I fuck with y'all though. I ain't gonna never do that. I with y'all though. No, I ain't gonna never, I'll never do nah. that. No, no. There's certain dudes I would never talk to, but not yeah. y'all. That's yeah. come on, man. You tripping? Fine. Fine. Call me in the middle of the night and say, "Come sit down with." No yeah. problem. No Bring problem. Some of this too. Yeah. Yeah. No problem at all. Yeah, got you leaning, huh? That, that boy feel good. Man, Keisha, man, we thank you for your time. Great oh, episode, yeah. Big man. fans thank of you, you. As, as, and, and what you've been able to do post-sports, showing us that we're yeah, not just athletes, guys, fatherhood, man. business, media. Cheers to your tequila. One more yes, time, sir. what's it, how you say it? Mi gente. Mi gente. Hey, get that shit anywhere. Yeah. Not <laughs> just at locals. Get this it wasn't really. This wasn't really supposed to be a plug. I was just giving it to y'all. As my people. Well, we're going to plug you, you anyway. Know what I'm saying? Anyway, we appreciate you know? it, bro. Yeah, we'll catch y'all, smooth. man. Keyshawn no, Johnson, sure. All the Smoke Productions, and the DraftKings Network. We'll see y'all next week.